Hi, this is Miller from Creator, and you're listening to the Phantasm Podcast. What the fuck is up and welcome to the Phantasm Podcast. I am Corey Gorechrist with me, as always, Dr. Vincent fucking West. Hello, hello. Guys, we, uh, it's a very, very special episode for you guys that we have for you today. We have Mele Petroza of Creator on the show. Fucking awesome. Uh, the doctor went and caught up with him. Uh, they are currently on a U.S. tour right now. It's the Decibel Tour, also known as, to creator fans, the Gods of Violence U.S. Tour. Uh, obituaries on there with them. We also had Terry on the show recently. Uh, also, Kenny. So that was cool. Of obituary guys dropped in. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, but the film we have for you guys today, um, it's very symbolic to uh, Millie himself, and I, I know the Doctor really uh, loves this film. Uh, it's It's... One of the best, in my opinion, for Carpenter. Uh, Doctor, what do we got? Uh, we have uh, John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness. I've got a message for you. This is the shape of fear. You're not going to like it. This is the color of hell. What is it? And this is the power of the Prince of Darkness. From John Carpenter, director of Halloween. A vision of the most powerful evil of all. Prince of Darkness. Where are you? Rated R. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. Which I think doesn't get any love. 1980, in the community. 1987. It's fucking uh, <coughs> Donald Pleasance. We got an anniversary with this here tonight, too. We do, don't we? Yes. Uh, Donald Pleasance. 30 years. It's fucking awesome. We got goddamn, you know, Dr. Loomis on there. Um,. Yeah, right there, Donald Pleasance. And we got uh, Alice Cooper, of course, as the street schizo in this film. And Victor Wong, who's Egg Shin, and fucking uh, Big Trouble Little China. So you got some more Carpenter love there. Some more of his cats in this well, film. Dennis Dunn's in this, too, which we'll, you'll mm-hmm. see in a second. He's, he's, uh, he's also, actually, let me pull him up here. So I know you'll, the second I show him to you... Um, of course, I recognize him. I absolutely adore this movie. And of course, we also have Jameson Parker, who uh, the Doctor loves in Simon and Simon television show. Yes, I do. I love him a whole bunch. And Dennis Dunn was in. Well, he was in Jag on a couple episodes of that. And he was in. Uh, He's uh, Wang Chi in Big Trouble in Little China. So we got <laughs> yeah. some more of that. That's fucking amazing. That's what I love. Uh, this yeah. Show. Yeah. Okay. It's awesome. This is a it's a great and it's right after Big Trouble too. This is off yeah. the heels of it, which a lot of people don't know. This Big Trouble in Little China was a commercial flop. Mm-hmm. It made its money on home video, like so many of Carpenter's films. And of course, <laughs> there's there's Victor right there, right. And we also have uh, Susan Blanchard that was in They Live. So yes, that's another yep. That's another Carpenter uh, cast right there. And that's and this, she was, was um, this is right before They Live. So yeah, that's awesome. This is probably the first. Yeah, because they live was the year after this. Yes, yeah. Um, which is cool. Shot in Atlanta, Georgia. Yep. Which we discussed. You guys want to go check out that interview? That's available. Corey's been so kind to put so many of those on on uh, YouTube, and th- that's a work in progress. Is the man works fifty jobs and uh, <laughs> two, uh, but you know, I love you. You do a hell of a <laughs> job, and um, never. Well, thank you. Never, never uh, underestimate the the power of of the Gore Christ. So, <laughs> yeah, we got a. Uh, this film's pretty stacked. It's got like a under. <coughs> under of course, very, Peter Jason's in this. Peter yeah. Jason's in so many as we've talked about before. Um, it's got a very underrated cast. I mean, this is kind of a you know, a little bit of an ensemble cast if you think about it. You know. So, um, well, I wanted to also say that you know this film is something that um, I realize I've tried to give this to a couple of different cats, but I really felt like they didn't deserve it. Yeah, and not not because of them as people, but it just didn't fit. And for some reason, to me, this just fits with the inner. I don't know. 
it just made sense to me. Like a lot of the times when I've brought this, it just didn't want to work, or I thought we would actually initially. Right, we've we've wanted to get this yeah. out since we started doing this. Really, I don't know. I'm just a big fan of this film. Alice Cooper's in this film. I also got uh, Dirk Blocker, who was uh, Terry Shaw and fucking Poltergeist. Yes, which was cool too. I mean. There's a, there's a ton of people. He was also in fucking. Uh, <coughs> was also in Starman, which is pretty cool. Night of the Scarecrow. Night of the Scarecrow is a damn good movie. It is. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is really like a kind of a. Or is I'm getting that confused with Dark Night of the Scarecrow. That's actually that's actually the one that I don't like. But it wouldn't. <laughs> there's a the, there's a Wang Chi. All right. Hey, it's Wang Chi. <laughs> what what about me? Know uh, your name. It's not good. <laughs> We also have a. Uh, oh, I guess he was a minor character, but um, Tom Bray was in the fucking Prowler, so that's cool. That is cool. Um, I mean, yeah, it's it's very low There's key. That dude yeah, about. yeah, um, guy that Terry Shaw from yeah. fucking Poltergeist. It's really cool. Uh, Dirk Blocker. He literally came up on the screen when you just mentioned him as well. <laughs> He's learning from Egg Shin. <laughs> yeah, but we. Uh, I don't know. This is a very low key like ensemble cast. There's just so many I good mean, characters like... in this. Uh, great actors, Donald Pleasance, amazing shot right there. It's really cool. Um, let's talk about the the print for a minute here. Um, Unbeautiful. Which I've actually seen this print before. This is one of the few we've done where I've actually seen the print of. Usually a lot of these I've Had seen you? on DVD. Yeah, I've nice. seen this um, this print, the Screen Factory. Either I borrowed it or maybe we watched it like a long time ago. I think I maybe like. we watched this a long time I think ago we did. at your house. Yeah. I think we did. I think we did. Uh, we really did. You were like, bring that and <laughs> it's we like watched it. First things you brought over. Is it feeling more familiar night? to you yeah, now? Like, yeah, 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 I figured. Because the whole movie revolves around this church and then uh, mm-hmm. the doorway to hell and, and all that. In my opinion, stuff. this is kind of a better uh, Exorcist 3 to me, it feels like. It's got kind of the same vibe to it. And I love Exorcist 3. Um,. But this kind of felt like that to me when I was watching it. You know, I, was, um, I actually looked at Exorcist 3 for him. And I know this is going to sound weird because we did it for Shane, but we technically did a totally different version of the film. So if oh, we yeah, ever, definitely got if, something special. I don't know if you guys would like this or not, but if we ever had to dip into that, we could technically do other episodes with the same film if it's a different cut. Yeah, we totally can. Because that cut of that film, if, if you guys... You know, from Matty Way, we did the... the the theatrical of Blood Rage, we can always do one of the other ones. Just oh, for shit. Sure. Yeah. Like the, like the, uh, yeah, yeah. there's two more cuts of that film. Same thing, you know, we want to give you guys Creep Show too. There's a few versions of that film we can do. <coughs> um, you know. So, I mean, there's always. I was bidding on a uh, used copy of that and lost it at the last minute. What? Creep Show 2. Probably uh, not both have Creep Show 2. Maybe you want to tell them about it? Yeah. Uh, you. I just want to say Jameson Parker's mustache is, is fucking ungodly in this film. It's awesome. It, it it's really like, is. It's porn star. It's pink. past porn stash though. That's like, <laughs> that's like give me give me that fucking twelve ounce steak ribeye right there. <laughs> that's like an automatic. Well, sound. I think the so reason I think you're I, here for the steak, right? It's I don't. Like, yeah, I, I'll take I don't steak know this, but I would imagine he strip. grew it out because he was still shooting. If you can double check this, I'm pretty sure he was still doing Simon and Simon when he made this film. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and it was probably an easy walk on for him because Universal is who distributed Simon and Simon, and then Universal is also who did. Uh, obviously, this is their run they did with Carpenter. He was in uh, theatrical productions of Caligula, which is pretty cool too. That's awesome. Uh, if you're into that stuff, I mean, one of these oh, guys. Um, but yeah, about the uh, it's also a major dad, which is fucking hysterical. That show's funny. Uh, there's well, you know, there's this weird, you, there's this weird. Major uh, dad was the other guy. The main lead in it was the star of, of yeah, of Simon, Simon and Simon. Simon. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's this weird channel. Whenever you gave me that antenna thing, um, me TV. Ah, no, it's called something weird. It's like a oh, I know what you're. Um, it's a, it's an old it's an old school sitcom channel where they just show old ass sitcoms. That, that's me TV. Is it me yes, TV? Yes, it is. They played Major Dead on there a bunch, and they played Saved by the Bell in the morning. So it was that's like, it. That is it. It's like I'd wake up from Marshalls and fucking uh, Saved by the Bell be on. It's like I'm getting up for school again. It was fucking Saved by the Bells on, and then <coughs> I would come home and there, you know, um, Major Dad was on a bunch and. They had a bunch of other shit on there, but it was just cool, just catching up on stuff I never got to really watch. Uh, <coughs> but anyway, I'm getting off subject. Uh, Creep Show Two. Um, if you guys had the first pressings of it, which I think was 
three thousand. I'm not sure how many. Oh, were it's made. Lower. It's like fifteen hundred, maybe. It's low because that thing was gone the second it came out. It's a red cover. Um, it's a three disc because now Arrow's gotten to the point where they're making shit very limited, uh, which is good. If if it says limited edition, it should be limited. A lot of these things, they make like five thousand copies of it, and then it's still in circulation. I think if you're real collectors and you're putting out something that's limited, it should be numbered and it should be fucking limited. It should not be a lot. So, and I love this shot right here of the three nuns. It's kind of eerie even though it's in the daytime. It's almost comforting but it's kind of fucking creepy. I don't know. This movie's got a lot of really cool vibes. But anyway, um, <coughs> the red casing is the limited version. That comes with three discs. They also have <coughs> a purple and it's the same thing. It's just a purple cover. It's like reversible, like on the inside of the one the doctor and I have. I think it's purple on the actual case, but the slip case thing is red. The other one, the Canadian one, is purple on the outside and the red's on the inside, something like that. And it's the same thing. And you can currently actually purchase the Canadian one, which is the same shit. It's just a, a purple uh, slip cover. And, uh, and directed by fucking John Carpenter. And there's... His fucking mustache, it's awesome. Uh, which Carpenter is probably rocking that same mustache, honestly, at this and point. And I'm off at this uh, point. Jameson's mustache. Um, or at that point, rather, I mean. So, yeah, now the only one you can get, you can still get the Canadian one through s- certain places. Um, <coughs> but it's not, it's not cheap either. But they now have a single-disc version of Creepshow. Uh, this creep show too, the same one. It's just they don't have the three discs, and they did the same thing with Blood Rage. But now, the shitty thing about Blood Rage, oh, that's gotta make that's gotta make you love that the fucking roaches. It's uh, it's it's, cause it's Carpenter, and it's cool because it's all connected. Yeah, um, this it, it it doesn't bother me in this one. I don't know why. Um, Look at that beautiful yeah, this Los shot's Angeles amazing. shot. That's awesome. It makes me want to even comforting. even though this area looks like a fucking shithole I would love to go here just to oh I'd love to live there yeah it looks great in the 80s uh, that building's fucking cool this is where the you know this is where we're gonna be at in this film uh, um, but the sorry. the single disc one they did you know they did the same thing with Blood Rage where they you know the limited was gone they put out a single disc version it doesn't have the other two and now the the three disc has come back into fucking circulation so now those are you can buy those again you can buy it on Amazon you can buy it anywhere so I guess they put out like a second pressing of the three disc version, which is the same shit. It looks the same. The slipcase is the same. <coughs> so maybe eventually for um, you know Creep Show Two, they will put out another red one. I highly doubt it because that one was gone. Like Blood Rage took a while. That was one of the first um, things that Arrow put out where they started picking up in the U.S. So I mean that had a lot of time on it before it was gone. But Creep Show was gone like the weekend it came out. Uh, the pre-order. Oh, it was gone that gone. day. It was gone. And I'm going to tell you guys, if you want that Phantasm box set, I guarantee you, if you don't already have it pre-ordered, you're not going to fucking get it. That's going to be gone. That's not. I'm, it's a limited thing, I'm sure. That's not going to be around very long. So everyone's been waiting on those movies to come out on Blu-ray. Now they got the whole fucking set coming out on Blu-ray. That's going to be fucking yeah. gone. And it's beautiful. If you if you haven't checked out the, you know, the Arrow one's nice. You know, it's the the sphere thing, which is pretty cool, but. I honestly love the the Wellgo USA version. It's got the the black Blu-ray cases that have you know the original artwork. It's and, pimp. And if I actually like, you know, the artwork they put on there, it just says Phantasm and the number on it. I think that's fucking cool. Um, it makes it even seem more like a collection piece. It's really nice. So um, yeah, if you guys if you want something to fucking go grab and pre-order now, uh, that would. I would highly suggest go ahead and pre-order the Phantasm. You know, if you, if you, the way that I read this, what I found on um, this video scope thing that I look at online, right? They made it sound like it's got a pretty good run on it. Like Amazon's got to have plenty of it. Oh, okay. but, you, but you don't want to wait more than a month to buy it. No, you really don't. Like you can get it. Is you you can wait and let it be out for like a week or something, but then it is gone. Like that Hellraiser set. Amazon's still sitting on a couple of those. But if you go to Arrow's page, it's gone. Right. It doesn't exist anymore. It's toast. So what Corey's telling you is true. If you want it, you need to go ahead and buy it. Now I'm gonna take I'm gonna this is for Corey here. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you remember how we watch this. 
Do you remember what we watched on this? Sean Clark does a horror's hollowed grounds, and he walks everybody through the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We watched it together. Okay. Sean Clark, uh, someone I'd also like to have back on again. I don't, I don't know how many people really appreciate that episode. That uh, looking back on that, that one's actually a pretty special episode. Um, it was difficult to set up, but really, we were really happy to have him on, and we gave him one of our favorite films. So, and uh, that is uh, Satan. We always have Satan on the show, you know. To uh, and that looks cool. That reminds me of fucking Mortal Kombat or something. It's like. What that is? Is that like actual souls or something in there? Yes, it's fucking cool. Well, they never explain what it is, but it's I guess John Connolly's. And this look at that shot it. right there, uh, yeah, it's guys. Satanic. If you look, uh, fourteen minutes and forty nine seconds, <coughs> roughly the the shot is just beautiful. I mean, honestly, as far as director standpoint, I think John Carpenter just nailed this one. I think this is probably well, Dean Connolly's be the DP on this stuff. Right. Director of photography, yeah, director of photography, genius. Yeah. Um, now I'm going to bring Corey back in, guys. I'm getting away from you again, but I got to talk to Corey about this. Now I'm going to bring into the entire fold why I thought this was perfect for Millie. Satan is real. Yeah. Um, if you guys, um, you know the the Creator album's been out the new one since the end of January. Uh, on Nuclear Blast. It's uh, Gods of Violence. I'm still listening to it, you know, since late January. Yes, am I. It's been a long time since I've had an album come out where I can listen to all the way through. Um, probably three or four times in one night, and then ready, you know, for the next day to w- listen to it again. I mean, I'm not, I'm not just sucking a dick. Like this is serious, guys. Uh, if you guys haven't heard it, whether you're into thrash or Teutonic or death metal, whatever you guys listen to, this is one of the best albums that's going to come out this whole year. I mean, it's really hard to top. Nothing's beaten it yet. It's just, it's just a kick-ass fucking record. I mean, there's not much else you can say about it. Um, from start to finish, the message that Millie's projecting on, on this record is, is amazing, uh, especially with the times that we're dealing with politically and socially right now. I mean, that record just, like, it, it kicks you in the fucking nuts. I mean, it, it's like a wake-up call if, you, if you're listening to a lot of metal stuff now, or whether, you, you know, you dip your wick in old-school stuff. I'm listening to a lot of other stuff, too, but um, that album is just very personal to what's going on right now, and it's... It's almost like a timepiece where if you listen to it in 2017 and you go five years from now, who knows how much of a smoking pile of shit this planet's going to be or this you know country. But uh, that album's very crucial to what's going on, and I think it's it's pretty awesome how, how far it goes and how much it resonates with, with me as a person and how I've been feeling. And, and I know the Doctor's the same way. So I, I take that album very personally, and I can relate to it. It's, it's nice to, to get that from a record, so... Um, and to, to see the songs live, you guys, they come to your neck of the woods on the Decibel Tour. Be sure to go see them. They, it was actually my first time seeing them live when, when the doctor and I went. And also, the doctor went again with Wheelchair Fucker, and they had a good time there. And I just uh, snagged the interview. <clears throat> yeah, so we we had a killer fucking time when, when I went. Um, oh, boy. Except for, the, you know, the, the venue was a bunch of fucking shitheads. But, uh, you know, that, that happens. But um, it's, yeah, the, I'm gonna show you that I, bought, I know you love that record. I bought that. It's fucking awesome. The it's Enemy a, of God revisited. It's on got there. a DVD. And yeah, all this other stuff. That's badass. It. I mean, it's out of print. But. You know what the funny thing is? They had that at McKay's before. They Good also, Lord. they also had that Hordes of Chaos fucking box set thing. They had. I've got they put that. out that one. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't buy it. It was like four ninety five. So they, uh, yeah, I mean that new album's just awesome. It's nothing's gonna top that. I don't think. Still, like I don't really see anything uh, nudging that album out of the way. <coughs> At least not anytime soon. You know, a lot of bands drop really good albums in the fall. That's usually when you can expect some really good uh, death metal stuff in the falls when they'll put stuff out. They'll do European. You know, they all have the same kind of tour cycle. They're gonna do a lot of European festivals and stuff in the summertime. Maybe do a couple of U.S. you know short U.S. runs, and then you know their album will drop in the fall, and then they'll do a lot of fall touring and shit. So. I know we got uh which was announced today, Satan and the fucking and tuna are going to town here. Um the tuna of darkness. The wolf of darkness. We got uh the new uh Belfagor is announced today, uh Toten Ritual, which comes out September fifteenth, I believe. Uh so be on the lookout for that. Also Eric producing it. Nuclear blast. I'm not I'm not sure. I'm sure. I don't know. 
If if if, if the they root, just started working with him, so if the roots is producing, that'd be cool. So you know, they're rooting. So we'll we'll see. Uh, I know they've been working a lot on that record. They've also been touring a shit ton, and they're going to continue to tour. Uh, maybe we'll bring you guys something with that. Um, but hey, that's in the works. We'll 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 get to that. Um, some other cool tours going on in June. Uh, we got fucking destruction. Uh, that's going to be amazing. Another Teutonic thrash band. If you guys don't know who they are, uh, you, you know Creator. I don't know how that's even possible. So, well, I'm, I'm assuming, um, you know. But yeah, that's going to be fucking awesome. Uh, that's in June when we're going. I'm not sure when the actual tour starts. <coughs> it's on. Our, it's on our page. I put the. You put the dates up. And we also got uh, <coughs> Gore Guts. Is also going to be on tour around that time in the U.S. They're doing a pretty good U.S. run, um, so that'll be interesting. Uh, they're always we're going to try to do that one, yeah. Yeah, they're they're always a good time. Um, My dumbass is not a time we should be good. And before that, uh, there's Vader and Eternal Bleeding. That's just going to be a really good. Very death excited metal tour. about that. One of the best death metal lineups for a tour I've seen in some time. And of course, you know, uh, we'll get to the doctor here for this one because I. There's a little segment I did, you know, that we did that I didn't put up. I was just going to put it up for shits and giggles, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, but uh, the Summer Slaughter Tour, the lineup should be announced here soon. We talk a little bit about uh, some of the... I mean... Some of the, <laughs> the people on that, there. That, that, the audio of that, I, I don't know if I don't <laughs> end up pissing everybody off and we have no one that follows us anymore, but I, I, say I was a little out of control. But, you know, I, I don't understand every year how people... Either a want to see the same stuff, but for the most part, they do. They want to copy and over, paste like the two thousand. Well, over and over, they want to put you know all this you know uh, deathcore shit or or this deathcore slash hipster beard metal crap. Oh, like, you and, know, you and, wanna, and tech death faceless wanna, dog shit. And that the whole point that that happens is you know you get this diversity or whatever stuff. The fact of the matter is that the the guy that runs the tour is a Sumerian Records guy. He's like the guy of Sumerian. So, of course, he's going to book all his alumni dog shit. And you know, I know in the I know in the past he's actually listened to a lot of fans and what they want. And a lot of the bands are like, "Fuck you!" Never say no. Like, uh, Spawn of Possession's been asked to do it several times, and they refuse to do it. That's which awesome. Is funny. Um, that's a real tech death band because that's fucking. Members of Necrophagist. Um, or Necrophagios, dude. Like, whatever. Um, You're a hick, you can't You know, when the, when the tour first started, I mean, they had a couple deathcore bands, but it was mostly, you know, death metal tour. Um, well, and you saw it, you saw it, and you, I want you to, you should talk about this briefly. I mean, you saw it fucking decapitate on organic hallucinosis. This is my only hipster thing I could ever say. Is I went to the first date ever of the Summer Slaughter Tour. It was in Clifton Park, New York. You can look it up. It was like June 1st or something crazy. And I flew up there with Jadrian. Love him to death. He does our he did our fucking artwork for the page and the logo and all that Thank stuff. Thank you, sir. Um, check out, I think it's Gut Rot Design, something like that. You check it out. Cool. Uh, visceral. Um, you, uh, we, we flew up, I flew up there. I met him. We hung out for a while and we went to the Summer Slaughter and it was decapitated. Necrophages plane got delayed. There was like five bands that didn't show up. Uh, there was a lot of shit going on with that. Because that's you can, if you can tell how disorganized the tour was. You know, the first day half the bands weren't there. Uh, the Faceless had a keyboardist at the time because they were just starting out. They had like a uh, that first that Aquadama record. Was, was Trent Reznor still in it then? Yeah, he was the keyboard player. Okay. Twiggy was the. Was no, the I'm being on. That singer thinks he's <laughs> Trent Reznor. Yeah. He's always wearing no, it's no shirts when he does the thin meat and grill. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so yeah, the, the you know we really want to see Arsis. And James Malone was sick, so the he was doing vocals. There was this guy that looked like a fucking Amish person. You know, you had Zebediah doing the fucking vocals. <coughs> so weird. that was kind of disappointing. And uh, you know, next Alice Christmas, Cooper. Now, there's Alice Cooper. Who kind of looks like Millie in the show. It's funny. You know, Millie's the. Street schizo in this film. Um, Millie's really Alice Cooper. <laughs> it's funny. Except Millie's a lot younger looking. He's not an old fag. But anyway. Um, I always thought Alice Cooper's actually pretty pretty fucking cool in this movie. He is. Um, 
besides doing the, you know, part six of Friday the Thirteenth stuff, this is the a song for this movie. Awesome, awesome too. thing that he did. Yeah. Um, where was I getting at with all that? You were just telling about the bands and stuff. Oh yeah, so Beneath the Massacre opened the show. It was fucking awesome. Uh, Ars has had a fucking Amish dude doing the vocals instead of James Maloney. He's just playing guitar, which is kind of annoying. Um, the Faceless was Nine Inch Nails. Uh, was, that was when they were called that Nin. And then, <laughs> uh, I don't even remember who else was fucking there. Uh, Cephalic Carnage played, and I wanted to blow my head off. I fucking hate that band. Yeah, wheelchair fucker loves that band. I don't even know why I have their CDs. I just like having their collection, which doesn't make any sense because the band I don't I don't like. Like I, live, they're they're just really stupid. Like they're like a bunch of Mexican stoner guys that aren't Brujeria, so I don't care. You know they're they're like this next song is about killing somebody while they're eating cereal and then they die in their cereal face down. He right? yeah, had seriously what he said, and it was really stupid. So you know, me and J Dream are pissed because you know. Half the bands weren't there, and we felt like we got gypped out of the show. And then Decapitated came on, and then we were all fine. Uh, we, of course, we famously saw <coughs> the organic hallucinosis um, era, where so was Coven on vocals, and VTech was uh, still around. He was playing drums, and they opened with Spheres of Madness, and I that was fucking awesome. Couldn't have ended a night better. They did it. <coughs> Coven didn't even set up with the mic he just got in the pit and started pushing people on the floor and it was pretty insane so I don't think I've ever seen a band come on the stage that crazy cause well they knew they had to bring it with everything that had happened oh and they like, did too they made up for it They, I think even if Necrophages was there the Capitator would have blown them off the fucking stage with that lineup I mean you got VTech on drums <laughs> like he was <laughs> probably one of the doctors actually going to die on this podcast <laughs> I'll get into that later. Oh, <coughs> it's a fan. Want to cut it off? Yeah. You all right? You gonna make it? Yeah. <coughs> it really bothers me sometimes at night. <coughs> no, I've got my medicine. It's the wind off that fan. I'm sensitive to like everything. We're gonna kill the doctor here tonight. We're gonna. Um, the guy that was just on the TVs from uh, Riptide, a show I watched when I was a kid, it was a Stephen J. Canal thing. The guy that did uh, A Team and um, Silk Stockings, a bunch of other like crime and popular shows in the '80s and early '90s. Uh, Renegade, awesome. Lorenzo Lamas. But um, what I was going to tell you, and I wanted to ask your opinion about this. I I, I didn't have the heart to put the post because I'm a big decapitated fan, probably not as big as you, but I do like them. And they put a post up recently saying how they're going to try to purposely write hits for their new record, and it was really bothered me. It's right on the front of their page. What do you mean? They're they they're trying to be like super successful and popular, and it just it just kind of knocked the air out of their me. Their name is decapitated. That's not going to happen. I know that's what I don't understand what they're doing. Yeah, you, well, you guys can look this up yourself. I, mean, I know it's the on singer Facebook. thinks he's mushroom head, but you know they're not big either. They're fucking a bunch of hacks from Ohio. I mean, I'm sure they're big in Poland, but I don't know. I just don't... I didn't know what to think about that. What that means that they're getting away from what they're already doing and they're going to try something totally different, more stripped down sounding? Or what that meant? Or there would be no death metal remnants left in any of it? I don't know. You'll find it. It's right on there. It's one of the... Uh, unless they put a bunch of shit on there today, it was in there. I don't know. I'm trying to find out. Are you on their page? Give us a scoop on the new record. Is that what it is? It's like an album update thing. No, this was a thing with like. This a is from. Uh, oh yeah, this is what it is. It's from Metal Hammer, and it says decapitated have a new album, and they're determined it'll make them huge. I'm like, so they're being kind of that. It's not something that I want to hear from any band that I listen to. Well, especially if they're decapitated. Being successful with an album doesn't bother me. What bothers me is when you when you take liberties on your uh, on your fans to gain new fans. I'm not talking about necessarily old fans, but just any fan. You know, if you've been a fan for two years, you've been a fan okay, for twenty this, years. This won't let me read it because I have to have the magazine subscription. Wow, that's gay. 
Basically, it says two and a half years since uh, Blood Mantra battered our eardrums into oblivion. Polish death metal heavy with Scapitated. I've just put the fin- finishing touches to their as yet untitled seventh studio album due out in July. That's all it's telling me. Look, I mean, I, I don't know. If I'm not. I'm not trying to crap on it before it's out, but that that was not something I wanted to hear. You know, that would that would be like me telling everybody that listens to this podcast. Guess what? I'm I'm super religious now. I shave my head, and I no longer wear a doctor's mask when I work hmm. or my police shades. Um, that's not going to happen. You know, I'll do it till I'm dead. <clears throat> and hopefully, people understand that. That you, you know, find this actual. Thing. Hopefully it's wanna, me misinterpreting wanna, something, guys. You know, I'm not buy trying a fucking to just... magazine to read this. No, God, no. Hmm. But anyway, I see what fans are saying about this. Yes, Satan. We're back to the movie yeah. now, and they're doing some encryption work on some of the uh, relics in the church. Um, you know, if I had known, I have to be honest with you, if I had known growing up as a kid that um, computers were going to be as popular as they were, I really missed my opportunity to have a really good job. Uh, that's the guy from Riptide, that dude right there. <coughs> with the headphones on. This guy says, <coughs> Team Rock, that's the name of the website it takes you to for that Metal Hammer thing. It says, Team Rock is such a hack click baity website. You have to sign up, and they only put one paragraph per page, so you keep loading all their ads. Garbage. <laughs> this link actually required me to fucking sign up and pay to continue reading. You fucking kidding me? Really? Really? <laughs> have a good night. The, that website is horse shit. I'm not paying for that. Well, these comments are going much better than the Suicide Silence Facebook, LOL. So, you know, these are all kind of... It's kind of fun just scrolling through stuff you don't care about. Um, you know, that's a good example. I, I have nothing against that band. It's not it's not a band that I would ever bring on this podcast or want to hang out with or interview or anything like that or bother, you know, stuff from them. <clears throat> I saw them a couple times with their original vocals, whatever, but, I mean, apparently everybody hates that new record of theirs, and it just makes, it makes me worry. Well, the Blood Mantra thing? No, the suicide silence. Oh, yeah. I'm using a, a genre that we don't talk about on here, but that's a good example because it oh, seems yeah, like that I thing mean, is a turd. And, yeah. And if decapitated puts out a, you know, decapitated, and it's just a turd. Oh, you know what they're gonna do? They'll probably just call it self-titled. It'll just be called decapitated. That seems to be what everyone's doing now. Let's, let's, just, call, let's just call it decapitated. Bayberry. Yeah. There's all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's fine. There. You know, I get why a bitch where it did it or whatever. Um, that's not what I mean. It's just. For decapitated, you they don't really need to be redefined because they kind of lost their, you know, main guys. Of the, and the Prince of Darkness was himself sealed. That old life called the devil. Hmm. And I didn't finish reading it in time. <coughs> anyway, and it goes on to say, and just to let you know, if you guys are not watching at home, it goes on to say that the devil is Doctor Vincent West. But Corey already knew that, so he doesn't have to even watch the screen to find that out. Right. Um, and then if you go down further it says the the doctor's master before the angel of death is Emilio de Troza. right so there you go so it all connects together the interview this movie everything but uh, yeah I love the way this film looks the night shots in this and they lit they lit this because this isn't a sound stage right, in this shot right here they lit this and it looks really... There's Peter Jason. He's in fucking everything. I love him. Right. But no, I'm going to be honest with you, and I haven't even told Corey this. This movie, the movie that we had, that I was thinking about kicking the tires on for this, I was going to do another car... I thought about giving him Village of the Damned. Yeah. But I wanted to give him something bigger that I've been wanting to give somebody that I actually really love. And there was Tom from Tom and Jerry falling straight to hell. Look. Anyway. Oh, Tom, that's awesome. Tom just fell to hell. <laughs> And there's uh, Wang Chi <laughs> hanging out right after his Big Trouble in Little China. They must have had fun working with John to come do this because Big Trouble, like I said, was a was a theatrical failure. I love the movie, but it was not something that uh, 
apparently uh, Gore cries cat like the movie as well. Um, she loves this movie. Oh, I'm in big trouble over China because that's when she started chopping in. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, John Carpenter was on such a roll with me uh, with films growing up because it's like Halloween, amazing. The Fog, amazing. Escape from New York, amazing. Um, uh, the Thing, amazing. Um, Christine, Oh, I love that movie. Uh, Christine was another one that I had considered uh, that we've we've not done yet. Yeah, but I've and and I and I would have totally you know considered that, but it just didn't really fit. You know. Yeah. Uh, it, that one would just have to fit, I guess. When it, if, if it ever fits, if not, we'll just do it as a as a single one. But anyway, uh, Christine, and then and then fucking um, uh, you know on and on with John's great movies. But it's right. he was just on such a fucking roll. But I've never I've never said this on this podcast that I'm aware of, and if I have, then maybe I did. But the last movie that John did that I loved was uh, was probably Vampires, and that's me really stretching at that point. Even though Vampires, to me, honestly, is starting to age better, it actually right. is better and more. And I have that one if we ever want to, you know, do that one. We should do it. Yeah, it's it's a. Is it the uh, the Twilight Zone? It is. Yeah, my Christine is too. Yeah, I bought that this damn is better print. I bought that one. Best Buy Steel book the other day because I had it for five bucks. Yeah, why not? If you guys want Christine uh, on uh, Blu-ray, you can get it really cheap. The, the Best Buy exclusive Steel book's four ninety nine right now. It's awesome. And uh, yeah, and. This scene is pretty vulgar. Well, who's the guy from Riptide? The street schizo here, the Alice Cooper. And yeah, he just got the. I, don't, I think you just missed that. You may want to go back. He just got it. I mean, it was a sprayer. You you should back that up. It actually is worth seeing. He got a straight sprayer. <laughs> I mean, you can see his blood just going pee. <laughs> he gets impaled. There we go. It's real quick, but look for the look for the blood just Arterial shooting out. Arterial spurting. Watch this. Woo! He's got some fucking sprinklers. <coughs> yeah, it's a it's great kill, nice. man. And the fucking the blood out of the mouth. It's really nice. Oh, and by the way, um, I wanted to tell everybody the reason I don't bring up release dates and all that other stuff anymore is because I'm, and I hope Corey's okay with it. I'm constantly involved on the page now. Yeah. And uh, probably too much, and I apologize if I am, but if you guys oh, see me yeah. posting a lot of shit. There should be stuff. People, are, <coughs> here's the thing people are always on Facebook, people are always scrolling, so it's nice to have. If you follow the page, thank you. We appreciate it. Tell your friends, get them to like the stuff. They want to keep up with the world of phantasm. Yeah, I mean, we're not we're not asking for a lot. Just click the like button. There's a ton of people you don't that even I have know. to follow us. Just give us a like, you know. But if we prefer to follow. You keep it up to date with what we're doing. Uh, I know we got a lot of stuff up in the air. I still got to put a bunch of episodes up, and you know we'll get to that. We've 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 been working. We've been working really hard. The doctor and I both. You know, the doctor's been running himself ragged doing this stuff lately. Like, and, uh, you know, he's been kicking it up fucking ten fucking notches. It's really cool. Um, not that he hasn't been before. No, but I, mean, I, I needed to. He's been in fucking more. third gear, you know, doing this stuff. So got to applaud my, my homie here. It's been it's been awesome. Thank you. Uh, we're, we're actually a couple months. I mean, we're almost approaching a year of this podcast. So actually coming up, like a few weeks. I have something cool I wanted to tell you. There's a friend of mine. I say friend. It's a, a friend of mine on Facebook, and I apologize because I don't know your name. Um, he listened, He's been listening to the uh, YouTube stuff, Yeah. and he literally went to Facebook, liked the page. This was so, it was a recent like, and then now it's into all of it. He's on iTunes and everything, awesome. and then just the other day realized that we were friends together, and... Uh, 
we realized we were friends and um and he wanted to uh to tell me that the YouTube was what got him there. So that's cool. a that's I, that thing's been a gateway drug. Yeah, um still getting a lot of love from that. You know, every day I got a couple of new um people saying they dig the, the interviews and that they want to hear more stuff and yeah, it's been it's been going pretty well. Tuna, what are you doing? I have no idea. My dog is oh, he's fucking farting and I don't know what your deal is, dude. You know, relax, man. And then now we've got the uh, the green orb. We'll call it. The it's kind of nasty. Centerpiece. It's it's cool though. You can get down, please. Okay. Um, if you guys are frequent uh, convention goers, uh, there's a it's a pretty good one uh, coming around the corner here in, in in late June that I'm gonna try to be a part of. Um, they're doing it's the the days of dead Indianapolis and uh, we're going to be doing a Dawn of the Dead cast reunion, which is pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, it is. Uh, this Friday they're going to announce the, uh, you know the group photo ops and stuff like that. So I'm sure there's you know you can probably get one with just Ken and fucking Scott Reiniger, which is amazing, and I'm sure you can get Galen and David, you know, Flyboy for a photo, but then you can get them all. And if they include George in this, I'm, I mean, that's, I'm fucking there. That's awesome. You get the whole damn cast. But, uh, Ken was a, a early guest of ours and, you know, still to stay in contact with the guy and, you know, we love him to death. Um, still the coolest thing, you know, we've done. Um, in my opinion, I think it was really interesting. Uh, we got a lot out of it. It's definitely the longest interview. Um, longer than any episode we've done, really. Um, I think, anyway. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it'll be cool to, to catch up with him uh, if we get to go and need be. Um, this is fucking bald Oh, that's here. gross. Just had the the green fucking goo spray. She's got the fucking Listerine pack in her mouth. It's fucking gross. Got the green brick. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, hopefully we... we you uh, recognize him, don't you? Uh, the, the black gentleman, he's... Uh, he is fucking awesome. He's in a ton is he in they of live? shit. I think he is in They Live. Um, that's not where... That's no, not that I'm aware of, but I'll tell you where you will know him from. Um, he was in fucking... Um, he's in fucking Dark Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in... Man, that guy, you should look, that guy is in everything. He's worked with Sam Raimi. He's worked with, like, everybody. He's also in uh, my favorite uh, Bruce Willis movie, The Last Boy Scout. He's in that movie uh, briefly. But that guy's the shit. He's in it fucking everything. I'll tell you his name here in a second. I'll actually go to... Um, it's not Ken Wright, is it? I don't know. I'm going to go look at... Uh, Robert Grasper. I'm going to go look at... Uh, Dark Man, and I'll tell you who he... Because he's a crime boss in that movie. Dark Man's another movie that I want to do sometime. Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't... It didn't feel like it fit with what we were doing. Yeah. I love that movie. That's my favorite Sam Raimi movie. Don't get offended, uh, Bruce Campbell fans. I'm a fan of his as well, Evil Dead fans, but I love Dark Man. Oh, that's good. I just love it. It's it's. I think it's the shit. Oh, um, Jesse Lawrence Ferguson. That's who it is. He was in fucking Boys in the Hood too, which is awesome. He's the he's the cop. Yeah, he's the cop in Boys in the Hood. Yeah, Jesse Lawrence Ferguson, from Bronx, New York. Yeah, he's awesome. He is awesome. And then Dark Man. Um, Eddie Black. I always forget Liam Neeson's. He was Eddie Black. Yeah. Oh, here's you. Uh, this I know we're not doing Dark Man tonight. That is, and I've told you this a million times. It's a fun fact for people listening. That is Liam Neeson's favorite film that he ever was involved with. That's awesome. And he says it straight up on the Scream Factory release, which I could not fucking believe. Well, yeah, let's do it. We need Ted Raimi on this fucking podcast. I would love to have Ted Raimi. I'd yeah. rather have Ted than Sam. Me too. Be like, oh, we got a very special guest for you guys, the condom salesman from Blood Rage. <laughs> That's what I would say if we introduced him. 
See, I love I love him in Hard Target, that Van Damme movie I love. He said, I ain't got no change, man. Because, <laughs> see, Hard Target... Oh, here's another reason why you love Jesse Lawrence Ferguson. Ferguson. Um, Star Trek Next Generation. Oh, yeah. He was. Season one. Yep. I don't know the episode, but he's in... I know he was dressed in like this crazy dress outfit. He's also in uh, Starsky and Hutch, which yes. is cool. Yes. Um, He's in a ton of shit. But I knew him immediately when I saw him in this. Buckaroo Banzai. I don't think... Oh, that's a pretty cool movie. But. Screen Factor. Screen Factor. Shadow Factory. <coughs> yep. Put that one out. I've um, got that. Um, it's a good shot right there. But yeah, the Dark Man is the, my yeah, attachment awesome. to that character. Oh, no. I'd have to uh, to do a little digging, but I think I think uh, it's been a long time since we've got a horror guest. Mm-hmm. I think I'll need to um, get back in that direction, at least try to... You know, I've tried a couple times with certain actors, and it just didn't didn't work out. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit different. They have a busier schedule. You know, the bands. do I think occasionally thing. it would be cool. But you know, if you're shooting a movie, I mean, you just don't have time to do shit like that. I mean, even when they're on the convention circuit, I mean, they're constantly shooting movies and going to meet with people to shoot another movie and, and writers, and you know, they they have plenty on their plate. You know, as much as bands do having to deal with, you know. But the bands have, you know, a good bit of downtime, you know, uh, when they're on tour, you know, they, they have plenty of shit to do as well, but, Definitely. you know, that um, occasionally they'll have 15 or 20 minutes to, to talk if, if we go to an on-site thing, you know, uh, it's different when they're on Skype, you know, we get, um, you know, scheduled times to do these things. But um, as far as actors, I mean, I understand it's a lot, it's a way busier thing where they're constantly involved with filming and, and all that stuff so um, and you know get a chance to if you guys go to conventions thank them for being there because a lot of times these actors show up in the middle of filming and they have a couple of days off and they fucking come out to these conventions to meet fans um, so that's pretty cool it is cool but um, yeah I don't remember where I was going with that either but. Well, it's been a long night. So. Well, no, I mean, um, <laughs> oh, uh, I was gonna say, uh, it'd be really cool. Maybe we can get to bring me on here. I'll, I'll look into it. I think that's a possibility. Anything's a possibility here at Phantasms. So. You know, somebody else that I'd like to have. I know this is this is another one, but I was thinking about today when I got that uh, the um, um, the full moon uh, pit in the pendulum, the Stuart Gordon, Jeff Combs. I was thinking, I was like, you know, Lance Hendrickson would be a cool fucking guest, too. That would be amazing. He's another one. I, I'm sure he does conventions. I just don't ever see him at And they're them. they're putting out uh, the lawnmower man soon. Uh, yeah, June. Awesome. June. Yeah. So, be on the lookout for that shit. I would, I want fucking Mark Sauter on here. Wait, uh, uh, lawnmower man, Jeff Fahey would be a cool one for you to get on here for us. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I don't know if anybody's ever seen this movie out there. This is a Blu-ray that, again, this is why I get mad when Scream Factory puts out fucking Teen Wolf as part of that. Shouldn't that be the Shout Factory line that's putting out Teen Wolf, not fucking Scream Factory? Is it Scream Factory? Yes. That's putting out? Interesting. Yeah, it's... Um, one thing they are putting out on their Shout Select line, which I'm very excited about, and this is just for just movie lovers, they're putting out fucking Cheech and Chong's next movie on Shout Select. Isn't that fucking awesome? Yeah, it is. Goddamn Cheech and Chong. But Up, and, sm- but up and Smoke is never oh, still not out, and neither is Nice Dreams. Which... I know. Maybe it's Nice Dreams is what they're putting out. It's one of them. It's like different strokes, really. Come on. Um, and they're putting out another Cubs thing. It's like, can you fucking... Can I get away from that fucking team? Uh, the Vagrant, which I will buy. Uh, Return of the Dragon, which is bought. Uh, Game of Death, of course. I think it's cool they're putting that shit out, too. Um, yeah, it's Cheech and Chong's next movie. God damn, that's fucking awesome. That's fucking bought. I didn't even see that. What's that? They're putting out goddamn Car Wash on there, too. Yeah, on Richard Shops. Pryor. Yeah, it's amazing. George Carlin's... <coughs> fucking love that movie. Shout Select's becoming the perfect uh, stoner line for Shout Select. They got next movie, they got Where the Buffalo Roam, the fucking Bill Murray, Hunter S. Thompson movie, which I love Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I think Terry Gilliam's a really good director. 
But where the Buffalo Rome, in my opinion, Bill Murray does a way better portrayal of Hunter S. Thompson to me. Um, he just sells me more on it than Johnny Depp. Uh, and I love Johnny Depp. They're also putting out the Pink Panther, which is awesome. Uh, the you know the the Peter Sellers Pink Panther, which is pretty fucking awesome. That's another thing I'll buy. Um, <clears throat> what else are they putting out on here? They're putting out uh, Island of Terror, which is uh, Peter Cushing. I don't know if this is a. Uh, doesn't seem like there's a hammer thing. Um, you know, if the Island of Terror, I feel like that's one of those. N- uh, other things. It's not. It's that other, the Amicus thing, probably. I'm not sure. I, I haven't researched. Those are not hammer, though. I owned every hammer DVD that existed in VHS. Those are definitely not. They look like that stuff. So I'm saying it might be that Amicus line or something. I'm not familiar with Amicus stuff. But it's, I don't. I don't it's, say, it's borrowed. Actors and directors from it, it's it's garbage compared yeah. to Hammer to me. Oh, it's it like it's second. Yeah, you know, the, the skull was pretty cool. Um, I mean, I don't have anything. Which they're putting that. that out. It's not. I think it's Kino that's putting out. The oh skull. yeah, they're putting out a NOS version of Kino it. Kino you know? Cinema, you know, Kino Lover for. It's now they're called Kino Movie Cinema or something crazy. I don't remember. Um. But yeah, you know, with Shout Factory, not really much coming out with them. I mean, there's some different stuff. They're starting to branch out into that shout select. I think their main main focus is on that, but Blomar Man is definitely something that I'm getting. That's something I've been waiting on. The doctor's been waiting on for quite a long time. Um, so that's that's awesome. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Um Oh shit! Back to the film here. Yeah, the film is rolling along now. now you have to give me a second, guys. I just got kind of derailed. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> um, I'm, it's not a bad thing. That's I just Robert uh, Grasper. I think that's a, yes. He that guy's Frank. Yeah. There's my Stargate alarm on my <laughs> phone. I didn't mean to do that. I apologize. I thought I'd turn that off earlier. He's also in big trouble in Little China, is he not? He's got all those fucking Beatles all over him. He is in that. Robert Grasmer, he's in fucking um, big trouble. Or They Live. He's in They Live, pretty sure. Oh no, most of these guys are all Carpenter. Oh, God. Now we got the fucking Jesus Christ. Yeah, this is this what is, is that? A serious. Like a shear is it like half of a a fucking uh, scissor. It's a big ass fucking scissor. God damn. Oof. That was that was gnar. That was fucking gnarly. It's good shit. It's a lot of it's a very underrated movie, honestly. Yeah, Robert Grasmer is a scruffy blonde man, and they live. I'm trying to remember what scene it is. So, yeah, there's a lot going on in here. There is. There's a whole bunch going on. Uh, doctors being Doctor Death here. They call him Doctor Love. <laughs> well, I'll final, 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 final. I want to play something just for a second. This is I just I've never got to do this. This never it never came to fruition where I can actually do this last year. I wanted to play this just a, just a, just a second or two of it. I didn't want to play. Um, um, it's not lying again, is it? No, no. It's, I'm, I'm not playing yeah. long. <laughs> it's through the night. No, it's definitely not that. Oh, yeah. But it is definitely something that I've wanted to... And you guys want to understand this. I'm playing this more for, for me and Corey, but it's just something that I feel like playing uh, right now. And, uh, and Satan wants him to play because she's... She's like, play show. Well, it's... When certain things happen, you know, it's just appropriate. Because I've been waiting to play this, and it's now appropriate.
Anyway. I don't know. Corey just didn't laugh his buns off. That was our <laughs> buddy Steve Tucker with Morbid Angel, which you can catch out with Suffocation, um, which apparently I'm going to be going to because he really wants me to come hang out with him. Well, and uh, so the last time he didn't do that, so you might want to go. I better do it. Yeah, because I think if I don't, he's probably going to rip my sack off. Yeah. So we're probably going to do that, and maybe we can get you, um, you guys some. Uh, uh, another one that I've been working on, and uh, I can't oh, reveal. You know, right an now, on-site but. interview would be pretty cool. So. Yeah, we'll definitely get to do that and yeah. <coughs> say hi to those guys and, and and see how Steve's doing and yeah, definitely catch check in with Trey and and uh, maybe maybe guys, maybe we'll run into Derek or, or um, from Suffocation. So. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you guys hear more about Angel Touring, I don't know why you are already not on that. Uh, planning on going, requesting off work, whatever you got to do. I mean, you know. That's just, uh, you know, get on that shit. Because that's important. i got to catch more of an angel touring in May. It's going to be fun. Um, everyone else is doing it, so. I don't know why, or as much as we don't really care for the Summer Slaughter thing, their Instagram likes everything I post, and they always have. I don't know what it is. I don't follow them at all. But... They like everything I post. It's just weird. Tuna, relax. Are you a tuna? Yeah. He's uh he's fresh tonight. Yeah, he's real buns. Wow. Okay. Hey, 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 some other good stuff uh, for albums that are <coughs> currently out. Um, you know, you can get uh, the new emulation that is out. You can purchase that shit. Fans noticed they got their old logo back, and that was not just something they brought back, you know, like, oh yeah, maybe we should do it to sell the record. I mean, they actually finally found artwork that'll work for their logo to be put back on there. And it's kind of a return to form record, so um, that's something to go check out if you guys haven't um, listened to Atonement yet. It's fucking awesome, so definitely grab that. Um, Trying to else. And of course, the the reason we're all here today, you know, God's of Violence by Creator is still my favorite thing. Uh, currently out and probably will be for a long time, so. Yeah, I've been the Satan agrees with me, so. And also, uh, for those of you guys, uh, this finally happened in the world. Alex from Crisian uh, got first class going to Mexico. Yeah, that's uh, fucking hilarious. I saw that. Funny. It's fucking so funny. Congratulations to Alex. Um, cheers, man. And uh, safe travels and kick, kick that fucking ass on tour. And um, congratulations on the, go tell him on the first class. Got him. Got uh, the whole band stopping by next. Yeah, they're month. gonna be first class on that Phantasm podcast. Yeah, they are right in the front row seat here. So um, be sure to send them some cerveza uh, while we're hanging out so um so yeah it's nice to see you know you after all this time you know he's finally first class so it's, can't say that he's not in style right now so oh fucking shit People dying. That was the guy from. Uh, He's from Kruchen von Fiegendurfen. Also, you can add uh, Tango Balsacco on, on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> 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 funny. <laughs> 
Tango Ball. Poncho Villa. Yeah, po- <laughs> it's fucking awesome. Don Quixote. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking awesome. I love that he did that. I thought it was funny. <laughs> well, I mean, that's understandable. You want to keep you your, want to add you, Papi Chulo. You, <laughs> you want to keep your page. You don't want to be with other people on it. And also add Tom Goldschlager from, <laughs> from Defeated Sanity. Um, yeah, the, the the Gorgos tour is going to be cool. It's Defeated Sanity. We've had Lily and uh, Josh on here. It's very fun. Uh, we had a pretty good horror discussion with those guys. Um, when they came on the show, so it was a good time. You guys can also uh, catch the warp tour and then go kill yourself. Yeah, <laughs> go just purposely have a heat stroke. Um, honestly, though, the the warp tour this year isn't. I mean, it's still like a half of a scene. Cut your cut yourself fest, but I mean, there's a lot of decent bands on on warp tour this year. I was very impressed with the. Uh, some of the bands they threw on there this year. Um, so they got um, fucking Guar, which is cool. Um, wouldn't recommend you guys going to see them at Guarbecue. I mean, even, or, or uh, see them just at, at Warp Tour. You can see them, you know, they're not doing Guarbecue this year. They're putting out a new record and doing Warp Tour, which makes Mrs. Gorkrest pretty goddamn pissed that they're doing that instead. What's that? Um, Guar's not doing barbecue this year because they're putting a new record Oh, yeah, out, you told me about that. And they're playing Warped Tour, which is stupid. Um, but seeing them in a setting like Warped Tour would actually be pretty funny because most people wouldn't know who the hell they were and then they, you know, cut people's dicks off and spew blood on stage and stuff. Uh, Ale Storm, which doesn't makes no sense that they're playing Warped Tour, but whatever. Um, that's interesting. Um, sick of it all, which... Nobody would be watching Sick of It All when <laughs> at Warp Tour. That's just some weird. He's eating this chair. Is he supposed to be doing that? No. Get. Get. It sure was. Fucking tarred. Fuck's your problem, dude. Oh, my God. Anyway, uh, can't picture Sick of It All playing for a bunch of fucking seeny weenies and them. Uh, I mean, that they're awesome, don't get me wrong. It's just weird that they're on that. What's that? That Sick of It All is playing Warp Tour. I mean, maybe back when they... I don't know. When Warp Tour first started, that <coughs> made sense because it was, you know, like generally a punk hardcore fest, you know, but mostly punk bands, but now those bands turned into pop punk bullshit and soft fucking butt core stuff. Uh, and Municipal Waste is going to be on Warp Tour, so that, that actually kind of makes somewhat sense, so that's pretty cool. Um... And y'all can stop by their merch booth and talk to Corey because he's a big fan and he uh, he'll be selling the municipal dildo, yeah, which it's lime green they've got on tour. It looks like the Jolly Vibrating Cucumber. It's for it's men and women. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly, I mean, somebody shared this brujeria thing, which is funny. I don't know what this is. Oh, they're on the, then they make the news. That's what this is like. What do you see when they show like the, the picture of it? It's all in Spanish. I have no idea what it says. But... <coughs> the actual picture is funny. I just want to hear the doctor's reaction. It's literally got to be funny. Trust me, <laughs> when they show the actual picture, it's funny. <laughs> Guys, if you can actually translate what's going on, then that's awesome, because we have no idea, maybe. Um, drop us a message and tell me what it says. Brujeria. He doesn't seem happy, whoever it is. <laughs> oh, that they're hyping the show. That's awesome. 24th of March, buddy. Hotel Clarion. They have the fucking phone number for the hotel that they're That's our buddy that we met. 
Oh, this is cool. Que <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Well, they had uh, Juan Brujo from uh, Brujeria on there. Um, you know, our news isn't that cool. It's all just a bunch of clown bullshit, but uh, that's actually Yeah, that's hard. how that works, unfortunately. How did I miss that? They're playing Warp Tour 2. Who? The True Sons of Liberty. Did you say Brujeria was? No. Oh. That would be awesome. Uh, I would actually go watch that because it's funny. No, it said True Sons of... Jesus Christ. Hey, relax. You're pissing me off, buddy. You need to fucking chill. Get... And the True Sons of Liberty, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> what are you doing? This has been the damn Millie from Creator Animal podcast. <laughs> it's been the... <laughs> Act up because we're recording podcasts. It's been the zoo cast here. He's usually awesome. It's goddamn Animal Planet. <laughs> <laughs> no, not after today. It's just been a fuck ass day to begin with. Back to the film where. Oh, we just got a. <laughs> was that even considered a decapitation? Well, it was eaten um, off. Yeah. We, and there goes oh, a hand. Oh, yeah, this is cool. It's just the fucking Beatles. He's just turning into just nothing. It's awesome. Wow. That was really cool. Um, kind of goes back to Halloween 3, honestly. Yes, it the whole, does. The whole bug thing, but it's not nasty. <coughs> There's. It's not nasty insects. It's just cool. Um, You know. It's got a very special effect to it where it's... I don't know. It just really works with the whole bug thing the way that that John does it. It's not a gross out. It's just kind of... It's definitely a horror element to it. It's not creepy crawly. It's just very effective, I will say. This is raunchy. Oh. <laughs> is that with wood? Yes, he did it with a broken piece of wood. Jesus fucking Christ. Now well, Jesse's dead. That's pretty... Ooh. This film's very effective, and the scenes that, that happen, I mean, it's not, you know, really gory or bloody or anything like that. It's just a... Um, I don't know, all the scenes that that's meant to pull you in really does, and it's it's very effective for what it is, you know. So, um, it definitely catches your attention. And, uh, you know, catches the animal's attention, too. He's just being a total butt. Doing a pretty good job of barricading themselves. Mm. 
there's Wang Chi <laughs> walking around with his flashlight. That's yeah, that thing is just wild, man. It's a nasty scene, too. I mean, it's, it's cool. They never really explain it either. It's just raunchy. It's just like supernatural muck. You know, it's like ectoplasm or something. Some kind of spiritual goo here. I don't know. I always thought that that was very effective, too. It's just the color of it and the... I don't know, it's just cool. Do you mind looking at this and seeing if I maybe did something wrong? Sorry, guys, I'm asking him something about the podcast. Well, it's just very effective, so... It's not, but... Did I... It's the same as what you saw. I just put that last thing and there was never any... Really... What? Did that mean explain all that? Oh, and I didn't do it. So I just messed up. No, just keep going with it. Oh, keep keep texting? Yeah, say some stuff. Okay. Well, I mean, I asked a question, and then there was no, so I didn't know. Yeah. Just type some shit. You know, you're originally from Canada and moved around a lot. You were raised in Atlanta and moved down to Florida and you're the doctor, you know, all that stuff. <clears throat> Say a bunch of shit, just go off, you know. If she wants to know, just tell her the whole thing. You know, the stuff you want her to know. You don't have to give her your social security number or anything, I wouldn't recommend that. Okay, well... Anytime we like a a basement, I always picture that fucking green sphere thing being down there. It's just kind of creepy because you don't know what the fuck it is, but it's drawing the attention of all these fucking people that are being possessed and shit and killing each other. Now Jesse's back and he's a revitalized and giggling. He's ready to go. He's ready to have some more wooden throat slits, you know. He looks very creepy. Uh, Dirk, on the other hand, is not very creepy. He's kind of... I think this shot was very hard for him to do, because he's, like, laughing in this right here. And even the act, the other actors are kind of trying to not crack here. It's kind of funny. I never really noticed that before. <laughs> it's just funny. Uh, Dirk's just kind of... You can't really hide that face. It's just funny. And of course, uh, Victor reminds me of a uh, an Asian Ron Jeremy. It's kind of funny. He uh, died in two thousand one. That's a long time ago. It's very, very sad. He was also in uh, the Three Ninjas movies, which is fucking awesome. Uh, loved those movies when I was a kid. He was also in uh, Tremors, if you guys like those movies. Um, yeah, those are those are alright films. They're cool family kind of horror films, I guess. Um, you know, those, those films were always around, you know, uh, when I was young. It was just... Fun to watch, fun little watch movies. Um, you know, of course, I've always wanted to meet Michael Gross. That'd be really fucking cool. Um, you know, Bert's the whole reason those films are great. And, you know, <coughs> Kevin Bacon's role, of Valentine, Valentine or whatever. He's you know awesome in the first film and didn't really you know I was kind of a purist when I saw those films. I didn't really want to watch any of the other ones because he wasn't in any of the other ones. You know, but. Um, you know, Bert kind of carried those movies forward and uh, made them watchable, so that was nice. Um, yeah, Dennis Dunn is, is who Walter is. I keep forgetting his fucking name. Um, but I think well, I think he's dead now. I don't know. Looked away for a second. 
can't do that in this movie because if you look up there's a whole like just everyone's just like dead now so we have this pace of this we'll movie for us in that if you don't care Is that not bad, though, that there was never a response to that? I just need to keep going? Yeah. Okay. Is that all right? Mm Mm-hmm. No. Uh... More? Oh, I didn't even see the rest of it. That's... Sure. (coughs) Anything you want to do to help? (coughs) I appreciate it. Wow, she's fucked. That's the lady that got that stuff poured in her mouth, and there's the Satan's child being grown oh. in. That's awesome. Wang Chi's like, normally I love being dominated by women. <laughs> I meant to put I love to go to the movies. I didn't put that. You change that for the horror thing? Or do you want to leave that? I can just... I just think it's weird that she's not responding. Maybe she passed out. I'm going to feel like an idiot asking her, what do you want to know? And then I've sent a bunch of stuff. Isn't that dumb? Yeah, what she said. Um, I know I should have done that instead of asking another question, but... She said so the risk of sounding lame... She was like kind of weird to ask you to ask me that. It's not yeah. weird. She said, "Tell me about yourself." The only thing I added was, "Have you sent it?" No, you can I make sure. I said yes. I am definitely definitely a freak. Is the Ha ha. What about you? <laughs> oh god! Or is that too much? Just put him a sexual deviant. Want me to put that? Yes, I do. Okay. A deviant? Do I, you want me to put that? All right. I mean, is that bad? I don't know. Just put, I'm a, I'm a whore. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't put that. Um, we can edit this out. I'm sorry. That's fine. Um... Movie's still going. And somehow, even though he's not dead, even though he's trying to stab himself. Oh, he's, he's just possessed now. Should I put on my sexual predator? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. That'll end well. As I go to jail. I'll just say. I am. Wait, I don't know. I am a sexual predator. I don't know if I would put. Well. She's not talking. That's why I'm worried about sending anything. I wanted to ask her about herself. I don't know. Yeah, at some point, if you're gonna, are you gonna send that? Then at some point, and then yeah, and I need to say. I mean, I would love to tell her I love to watch porn and all that. So I just don't know if that's right, right off the gate. I mean, I'm sure it's fine, but I love horror and adult movies. Are you really putting that? Yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. I'll have horror and adult movies. <laughs> yeah, should I put that? No. That's what I'm saying. That's good. She's going to be like, this guy's fucking nuts. I don't well, want to do it. She said she's a freak. Whatever. I own it, man, if you want it. Let's see. I, I, I'll I, have I, horror movies <laughs> and porn. <laughs> don't. Don't. <laughs> What I, what I'm saying is it's not gonna really no, and of course porn. I, I, what I mean, what am I <laughs> supposed to do? Be like, yeah, you know, I, I just don't know. I mean, it, obviously, at some point you need to talk about that kind of stuff, but it's just like it's just I'm not, dropping it. You gotta do it. Yeah, but I can't drop some of the stuff. I you know. I love horror and of course porn. <laughs> I can't put that. No. <laughs> I mean. I mean. Yeah. Imagine when I was sitting here thinking, it's like, yeah, I like to wear women's pantyhose and jack off in it. It's like, yeah, that's going to go over real well. I love horror movies. I was younger. I love 
music. <coughs> I don't know. It's all garbage. I, I feel like we shouldn't send anything because she's not responded to that. That's right. She's, yeah. Why is she not saying anything? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like all that should just be scrapped. No. Unless you can fix it. Don't put... Oh, I'm not. I was kidding. When Canadian moved around a lot as a kid, my last name was Curry, by the way. I put LOL in for that. I'm trying to make it Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. I love horror movies. I was in several bands when I was younger. It's true. Um, I've done stage work. We could much. That's even too much to start talking about that. If I put What About You? So tell me about you. Yeah, that's better. The sex stuff, I would like to just see how she reacts to me because if she's just going to go through herself, I mean, she has no idea what she's unlocking. It's like a Canadian werewolf inside you, rated R. I think it's weird that she's not responding. Oh, that's what I'll put too, because you can't just be like, I'm Canadian. Uh, We'll see. Can you put something as a header? Because my dumbass, since my dumbass asked that stupid question, even though she told me to tell her, me about right. myself. Well, I am definitely. You can tell her I played hockey too, which is true. I don't know if that's interesting or not. <coughs> Maybe you shouldn't put that. I don't know. But well, I'm definitely a freak, and that's okay. Mm. Yeah, that fits right next to you. Sure, I'd like to know. I was like, well, I am definitely a freak, so, and that's okay. I'm a Canadian moved around a lot as a kid. My last name is Curry, by the way. LOL. I love horror movies. I was in several bands when I was younger. I need to put maybe... Just put that. I don't even say anything else. You don't think I should ask about her? No, that's some stuff about you. Maybe she'll want to know more I don't know did you send it mm. I'll send it right now do it. okay I didn't know she was even up this late maybe she's off tomorrow I don't know okay I'm sorry so we got the uh, nothing's really happening it's just kind of I'm doing it the thing. bitch from from uh, The Shining right here the, <laughs> the fucking boils on her body um. Uh. Response because Scott's a drunk. bitch from room two seventeen from The Shining. <coughs> rotting away in this fucking bed. Whatever she's doing, it's fucking nasty. Whatever it is, the bitch with scabs, is freaky, freaky deaky. I mean, it's kind of dead time right here because they're just kind of just held up. All these fucking people are being nuts and uh, trying to get into this building here. And they're just trying to stay away from all these crazy fucks. It's egg shin. They take what they want, and leave the rest like your salad bar. <laughs> That movie's got some of the best lines in it. I know this movie's kind of slow. I apologize, everybody out there, but it's really gory. There's the woman that is that got the uh, green goo from the spinning s- sphere of death at the beginning uh, part of the film. <coughs> now they're basically just trying to figure out a way to, you know, keep the parasite from growing into its host, and uh, it's in a gestation period, so they're trying to. You know, keep it at bay, the the evil not getting any stronger than it already is. So it's always good to you know. Um, so they're they're working on that. That's pretty much where we're at in the film right now. And uh, of course, we've had some deaths, <coughs> and some other crap go on. But other than that, everything seems to be moving moving pretty fucking smooth.
And of course, there's just so much shit going on in this film. You can't even keep track of <coughs> all the different stuff that's happening in it. Sorry, I got a little quiet there. Donald Pleasance, to me, also, what an essential actor. You know, what a loss that was when we lost him. I mean, unbelievable actor, you know. There's the lady that got the goo, and now she's just laying on this, like, cot, like, mutating. She looks like she's been in a fire. It's really gross. I don't know how she has any hair. And then she just laughed at Wang Chi at, um, at Dennis Dunn. But anyway, it's really funny. It's fucking freaky. She's, like, melting. She looks like a fucking pepperoni pizza. It's really gross. Like like a hot and fresh one, like from fucking Little Caesars. That's what she looks like, her face. <coughs> it's really awesome, though, this movie. I remember seeing it at the theater, and it scared me half to death. It literally did. Like, I was like, you know... It scared me, but I thought it was cool. There's nothing in this movie, even as a kid, like... It freaked me out, but it didn't, like, unsettle me enough to where I couldn't enjoy it, if that makes sense. And John Carpenter's movies have always kind of been like that for me. I've never... <coughs> I've never felt... Excuse me. I'm still recovering from the sickness from going to the Creator show. How appropriate that I'm still coughing during the Creator uh, promo video. Uh, audio, I mean. But... Uh, um, upper respiratory infection. But, um, yeah, you know, John's movies... Like, I was scared in them, but I wasn't... You know, I never felt... Not all of them, but, you know, the ones that were scary... Like, I found Christine to be particularly scary as a kid. I thought it was scarier than Prince of Darkness. You know, They Live was just cool. <coughs> and as, as a kid, it's an alien movie, and you get older, and you realize it's just John flipping off the uh, establishment, which is amazing. Um, so now you've got this the woman that got the green uh, orb goo in her mouth and she's just starting to fuck shit up. <coughs> That's pretty much where we're at. And my Simon and Simon guy he's knocking shit out. And everybody's uh, doing their thing and she looks really oh. freaky. She looks like a fucking vagina. No, she looks like a pepperoni pizza. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like Pizza the Hut from like Spaceballs. Totino's pizza roll. It's just nasty, but very effective. The makeup in this film. She's fucking raunch butt. Well, I was, I was looking at right now. I apologize that I didn't do that earlier. It looks like a fucking herpy. Why did I not do that earlier? I couldn't find my fucking Wikipedia app. You gotta have your Wikipedia app. Um. Oh, side note, Stuart Gordon and I, the, one of my favorite horror directors, he and I had the same birthday. I just stumbled across it. Yeah, I thought that was weird. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's just weird. And Hulk Hogan, if anybody cares. But anyway, we all have the same birthday. Um, but I cannot remember who did that. Oh, man, that is nasty. That was a vulgar kill. Good Lord. Oh, man. There's a lot of uh, interesting kills on here. I mean, they're not like... Oh, wow. This movie came out October 23rd. 87. In 1987. And... It had a $3 million budget and it made $14 million, so it tripled its money. And uh, I'm going to get the makeup information for you because I can't remember who did. Um, I totally missed it on the credits. I wasn't even, I didn't even see it. On. Oh, I should know this. I'm supposed to be the carpenter now. Oh, wow. Now, this is interesting. Carpenter originally wrote this screenplay to, to be Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. It makes sense because it This movie was supposed to be Halloween 3 Season of the Witch and then Tommy Lee Wallace changed it. 
Prince is good, honestly. That it is, it is, because that movie's a shit. But but when you're watching Prince of Darkness, no wonder I love this so much. It's it's supposed right, to be. I guess I was right. You were right. You're exactly. Right. You're right, and then some. Because of the whole bug thing and how they're kind of like entranced and. I guess now, now here's something interesting. Now this now let's talk about this a second. According to John Carpenter, this movie this movie lies more in common with the ancient clerical secrets in his movie Vampires. So there's a connection there to some degree. Um, yeah. Oh, this is so fucking sick. Just a horrific scene right now. Oh, it's awesome. God. Man, I'm trying looking at that in the mirror. Well, guys, uh, thank you so much for staying with us, checking out the film. We are, of course, doing the Screen Factory version of Prince of Darkness on Blu-ray. Um, came out a while ago, so if you guys haven't picked this up, probably be a little harder to find now, but you can still order it. I mean, um, I'll get you all the price in a second. Yeah. Um, um, it should the, be about 17 I think. The makeup effects in this... Well, don't forget, we have Millie Petroza of, of Creator coming on the oh show. Oh, God. I went through too uh, much hell. Up. You got to please stay around and check that out. Of course, if you guys are very impatient, like the doctor and I are, um, you can check it out on YouTube. We'll have the, the link on there to follow. So if you check out the info on, on the, you know, click on the link on the bottom there, go straight to our YouTube, and you can just listen to the interview. Otherwise, thanks for enjoying uh, Prince of Darkness with us. It's a lot of fun. So, yeah, the similarities is uncanny with this and um, Mark Showstrom. Okay, <coughs> and he's unaccredited. Showstrom's done a ton of shit. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think it's pretty Number Elm Street 3 yeah Evil Dead 2 uh, an episode of Monsters he's done a ton of shit I can go through the whole thing if you want me to but not really necessary he did the Toby Hooper Mortuary film right um fucking did all <coughs> did the entire He's a fucking Star Trek guy, isn't he? No, he did Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which is what I'm jerking off about. Okay. Because the makeup in that show is actually really fucking cool. It is awesome. X-Files. The movie. He didn't do the show. Anyway, Men in Black. He's done a bunch of shit. What's the new Amityville? He's doing the makeup effects for that, so that that might be something I'll actually watch. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. come out this year. God... Did you not see that? The head come off and then she put it back on? All right, this is... <coughs> he nice chopped it off and she put it back on. Now, that's one of the ones he did that we watched. He did Slumber Party Massacre, which is cool. But the makeup in it? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Video drone. He did the Mutilator. <coughs> uh, the original Nightmare on Elm Street. He did the Mutilator? He did. You've met him. No, that was the, one of the other guys I met. Lame. Yeah, if I met Mark, you would have known about. Um, yeah, he did all. He did the first three nightmares, I guess. Um, From Beyond, that was the one. Um, Witch Gord. Goddamn Phantasm Two. Poltergeist Three. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I didn't know where you wanted me to even start with that. Lord of the Dead. Yeah, he was a. He did Star Trek Generations. He didn't do the show, is what I was saying. No, he was the makeup artist and process. The guy, artist. any if you guys are ever confused, did this horror guy yeah. work on a Star Trek thing? The he, same makeup guy did all of Next Generation, Voyager, and uh, excuse he, me, he did the makeup Next Generation, for DS9, and Voyager. He did the makeup for Voyager, all of it, forty-one episodes of it. He did a season. 
that's like a season that's like a season season app no it's cool it's not that it's just but the, 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 there's one makeup guy in general and he yeah. may have been under because the same guy if you look up Star Trek makeup effects it's generally the same people unless you're looking at the stuff from the 60s and I don't know why you would uh, I'm gonna check out this Amityville Awakening here See who the guys the cast. See the director is Frank Calfoon. I don't know how to say his fucking name. Um, Calfoon. I don't know. Uh, he's the one that did that shitty Maniac remake thing with Elijah Wood. I mean, you know, I it was too artsy for me. That, that film was a straight up gross, raunchy slasher movie. You know, um, girl in the middle of oh, the night yeah. getting abducted in a New York movie, and he turned it into <coughs> some artsy fartsy Terry Gilliam ripoff movie. Uh, that that new maniac thing. That's who's directing the that Amityville movie. Fuck that. Uh, he also did P two, which is terrible, and uh, Piranha three D. Was P two that guy yeah. that? Well, he is actually an act. Uh, Wait, is P two yeah. the thing with the the parking attendant guy that goes yeah. crazy? Yeah, Jens loves that movie. I've never seen it. Uh, he did. He was in Piranha 3D. He was also in High Piranha Church. 3D. Is funny. Yeah. He was in. Uh, he was Jimmy in High Tension, which is cool. So yeah, he's a French guy then. His High Tension is actually pretty good. Um. Jennifer Jason Lay in this what and Bella Thorne ugh Kurtwood Smith that's in it. that's pretty cool um it doesn't look like they're doing like a reboot thing where it's the original thing you know let me see a single mother moves her three children into a haunted house I don't know where it's bloody history and it's going to be PG-13. So, I don't know. If Show Sims doing the makeup, it might be cool. I don't know. Um, still kind of wary about PG-13 anything. I just don't... You know what I went and watched? I, haven't, I, haven't, I want to tell everybody about this. I went and watched Rings last night. Oh, God, you did? Yes, I did. I wanted to tell everybody about that. I did. I needed something to do. And you know it's it was playing cheap, cheap theater, and I uh, went and watched it. And I actually, I I figured something out. And and I mean this isn't I'm, I'm not saying this is like groundbreaking news, but this this is my take on modern horror. When I was growing up, everything was um, slasher, yeah. which is probably why I prefer slasher. And now everything is supernatural. Mm-hmm. Every fucking thing is. Yeah. And I mean, if, you, if, you, that... if you really weed out all of the shit, that's why I like those uh, Conjuring movies. I think they're the tip top of it. They flow good and they're, they're basing it off. I know not all of it in there, but they're basing it off stuff that at least some of it was true. But I have to say that that Rings movie, and I've never seen... The Ring or Rings or Ringers or however whatever the hell those <laughs> ones are called. I'm assuming this was the third film. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think so. And I'd never seen the other ones. And that that fucking guy that was on Roseanne that's on Big Bang Theory was in it, which was just weird. That is weird. Uh, but the main girl in it, the main girl in it, I wanted to pleasure her anus with my big Canadian beef. <laughs> um, I did a lot, so that kept me interested in it. Was it great? Not really. What I bought? No, but I didn't hate it. But I didn't really like it either. Does that make sense? It's like if you've seen one Supernatural film, you've seen them all. Speaking of, the film is is now over. Yep. It's just kind of... You woke up at, out of like a dream or something? Correct. So they... I'm not sure if it's real or not real. It's one of those and John things. leaves it wide open for you to terrorize you until you're dead. You know what John loves to do... Um, He's very, very good at keeping stuff wide open so that you can think of it for yourself. And <coughs> he's very, you know, I respect him for that as, as the artistic direction he goes for in these films. 
Uh, the interesting thing is the tie-in with Halloween 3. I think it's very apparent that it seems that way, you know, especially with the bug things. And the, so that's what I'm saying. And the, it can't the, be the a drum. trilogy of movies yeah. if, in reality, this was... T- and it says it right there. It's, very, like, a, it's like a drony, you know, the drony community of people that get, you know, they're under some kind of... They're God by, there's God by sequels and a trilogy. No, oh, that's stupid. Yeah. I don't need Indiana Jones everything, you know, just leave it alone. But it's not even that. It's it, it's it's really... Well, Spielberg, it, just leave it mm-hmm. alone, you know. It's, it, it not everything has back to, to Star have, Wars. Not, every, have not everything things. has to have three of everything. You know, just leave it alone. Well, that's. I think that's why John's probably my favorite director is because he doesn't explain what he does. You either you either dig it or you don't, and he doesn't give a shit if you do or not. Oh, the computer effects coordinator was Robert Grasmer. It's awesome. Who was Frank in the film? The guy that yep. turned into bugs. It's pretty cool. Uh, he's actually a behind the boards guy. That's pretty interesting. Um, good little tidbit. That's why I always like to read the credits. You know, sounds nerdy, but <coughs> something something I enjoyed. Yeah. But John also isn't a sequel guy. I mean, and know. the catering was done by Gorecross Catering, which was weird because I didn't know that existed back then, and it did. It sure did. It's by, uh, but, uh, by Cody Gorecrist. At this time, it'd be uh, Connor Gorecrist. Or... <laughs> I don't remember. Didn't know the guy. Pre-recorded footage supplied by CNN. Pretty cool. Of course, Prince of Darkness, which was available off of Raise Your Fist and Yell. Um, Alice Cooper. Yep. Well, now, when I was a kid, and then I believe if you get it now, it's actually put on Constrictor. They actually switched all really? around. Yeah. You because know, my cool. vinyl of Raise Your Fist and Yell has Prince of Darkness, but my CD of Constrictor has Prince of Darkness on it. That's I don't, cool. It's, I don't know. Get the best of both, you know. Well, it is, but I'd rather it be where it originally was. I was trying to see where this was. Because well, Constrictor's in. 86, Razor Fist and Yell's 87. It would make sense that it was on the 87 price, right. but whatever. Well, this was shot in L.A., was it not? It was, yes, that's correct. The whole thing. It's awesome. It kind of has a They Live vibe as far as... Well, the, it's right before it, you know. Yeah, he's he's, it, it he's in his own here as far as I'm concerned. He's knocking out hit, 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 hit to me. Oh, he did? He's knocking out stuff that was... And even if it wasn't a hit in the theater, it was going to be a hit on home video. And and people one of the only people have to that realize made. that the VHS industry of the 80s and early 90s was fucking huge. Yeah. It introduced more fucking people, myself included. But I had an uncle that liked to go to the theater, so I did get to see a lot of the stuff at the theater. You know, it's you, not bullshit. I did really did, but you know, um, you know the uh, the final thoughts on this whole thing. You know, the the print of course looks amazing. Um, never disappointed in any of the stuff. Should, shouldn't be any uh, argument or uh, anything. I even really need to point out about the print. I mean, of course, it's flawless. Uh, but what I said in the beginning, if you guys were keeping up with everything I was saying earlier, um. This is a really low key ensemble cast that you don't really think about until you watch. He's it. really good at doing that. Yeah, too. it's it's you know his boys, but if you're you know with Frank Rasmer and you got um, can't think of his, his fucking name, the guy from Simon and Simon. Um, you got Donald Pleasance and Alice Cooper is amazing. Um, you know, everybody's good. good. I mean, it's a it's a you know every every single actor. In this film, I mean, he hand chose everybody, and it's yeah, like either. he does with all his stuff when he was not going to know the park from Big Trouble in China, or they live, or somewhere in the in the realm of John Carpenter. So, if you're a fan of this his stuff, I mean, this this just but it's interesting to see here as cool. much as you know. I know you're a fan of it, obviously I am too, and it's something I, I mean I learned tonight. On this, I will say for the, just for the you know if you're watching the Screen Factory Blu-ray, the the uh, the fucking menu screen for this is awesome it's amazing it's so cool that's probably the coolest menu screen I think uh, that Screen Factory's done this is just really cool I actually would just watch somebody this at that company is a huge pizza John face. Carpenter fan because they've put out a ton of this stuff oh yeah just about all of it you got uh, Assault on Precinct 13 Escape from New York this They Live The yep. Thing um, Hollow, all the Halloweens uh, even though you know the first three whatever um, well, he had to do two body bags, even which is cool. Yeah, he did the body bag. Yeah. He did that. Um, the fog and yeah, the fog. Um, bunch of shit. Yep, they've done all of it. All the stuff you need, they got it. So, um, Hit up, uh, all of John's stuff, all of John's classic films are now all on Blu-ray, which is cool. 
Even There's Elvis, nice. they put Elvis out too. Shit. Yeah, I can't believe I found and that. And you found that. Really cool. I fucking use CD store, so that was interesting. That movie's actually really cool. It is. And then For fans John Carpenter's movie. Vampire is about the only one. And, uh, or Ghost of Mars, too, which I have. Yeah, that was uh, a thing's worth a pretty penny. I have that one, the uh, OG. Yeah, you they're, they're actually putting that out again. They're, I forget which company is doing it, but they're putting out Ghost of Mars. I think it might be Vinegar Syndrome. It's really? Out Ghost of Mars, yeah. Yeah, it, it has to be Vinegar Syndrome. Interesting. For Severn. I, I think it's Vinegar Syndrome they're putting out. Ghost of Mars here soon, so you can get you a newer version of that. If you guys probably look better too, you know I have like the bare bones. Uh, no, that thing's cool. Actually. High def thing I got, yeah. And then of course Twilight Time. I think still has vampires. I don't think it ever. No, they're never going to be sold out of that, which is fine. You know, uh, still get probably it. one of my favorite vampire movies. There's not many that I really like. There's not many great ones. On what is you your watch favorite? Hammer. Just real quick while we're wrapping this up, what is your favorite vampire movie? Is it Friday Night? Yeah, it has to be. Even though, I don't know. You, see if you can do mine for the everybody. I need you think about this. Now, I've told you this. And we had to talk about this recently because I was really mad because I could have met the main motherfucker in town playing his country bullshit and could have got my fucking oh, picture. Oh, uh, Lost Boys. Love that yeah. fucking movie. That's That's got to be a second favorite for me was Lost Boys. Um Close second. Very, very close second. Lost, Bo- Lost Boys is one of those, if we ever did it, I'd just have to have the audio up the whole time. Me too. Because the soundtrack's great. The dialogue is fucking... uh, The dialogue's the best part. Um. <coughs> a lot of people wanted Scream Factor to do like special edition of that. Well, here's the thing with it. They would have to let Warner Brothers relinquish that to them because Warner Brothers really doesn't like to play ball with anybody else. No, they don't. And the Blu-ray that's out of that... It's a really old one. It's one of the first ones they did. So when you put it in the player, it automatically plays. Yeah. And if you leave it in your player, this is something really interesting. When people, if you don't have the Lost Boys on Blu-ray, if you buy it and you're like me and you like to go to sleep at night, it will literally be playing when you wake up. It just loops. Yeah. There's nothing else to it. Which is fine. Like your Ford Fairlane. Yeah. Which I still love. Uh, Andrew Dice Clay, if you guys pick it up. But, um, yeah, so in closing, Prince of Darkness, classic. It's essential. It's Carpenter. Um, Donald Pleasance, what more do you fucking want? And it's Scream Factory, yeah, so uh, pick that shit up, definitely, if you don't have it already. Uh, even if you're an Alice Cooper fan, you know, he's in the film, he's killing people, it's fucking awesome. Uh, it, it's you know, and I think that was definitely... On the, it's a well, selling point, yeah. Well, at, at the time... Especially in 87, I mean, for Cooper fans, this is a really good time. Well, what Cooper they did, fans. what they did, the, the Universal... Just coming off of... Uh, Jason Lives, too. Just the U- Universal movie. used his production company to promote this film. It's awesome. Definitely worked, dude. I mean, so this film made a lot of money for what it was, so it's awesome. And definitely looking back alive, now, it's definitely alive a lot of classic. Alive was his, was his yeah. record. It, he was on a different level, but Alive was like his little thing he put yeah. on stuff. I'm alive, like I'm not dead, I'm yeah. alive. And so this, when I went and saw this at the theater, it was like Universal Films, but it, but it said Alive Films at the front of it. Because it was cool. supposed to be like a raunchy uh, subsidiary of, you know, of Universal, right? But, but yeah, and um, we have now we will bring you uh, the star of the show. The whole reason we're here tonight, um, uh, Doctor West caught up with Amelia Petrosa of Creator, talk about uh, the God's Violence tour, Decibel tour, whatever, uh, and as well as the the new record, and you know, to do a brief history. They go off a lot. They go off into just some crazy shit. They talk about just movies in general. It's pretty pretty awesome discussion. Um, you, I think you guys will really enjoy it. I'm proud of it. Yeah, I, I'm proud of it. I think I it's f- cool. Post a lot about. It. I'm sorry, guys. I just really end up. I'm really happy that we we went through a lot of planning and a lot of bullshit to get it. So it was. Not, not from them or our from Nuclear Press. It was none of that. It was just we just had bad stuff going on around us, like me getting sick and Corey having other commitments. He had to do other things and work and just a bunch of stuff and just a lot of yeah, not to mention plan. You know, just you know, sometimes plans go to shit on you and right. and I, I want to take a second if you're okay with it that they should drop a fucking nuclear warhead on Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah, that place is just an action. Don't ever go. Uh, don't ever go to that club. What's that club called? Don't ever. T- the Underground, like the Fillmore or whatever. Don't it's ever just, go to the Fillmore. It's, it's or a the Live Nation venue. It just, it just sucks. It's just a very they hire like ex criminals to pat you down. Yeah, it's just an unpleasant experience. Uh, maybe other people with different shows have a better experience than we have, but I mean, I've never had a good experience going to that area 
with staff at music venues or metal shows, I, they they turn into like DEA agents. I don't get it. It's like I'm just going to a show, man. You don't need to fucking like check my nutsack for like contraband. I'm just going to see a fucking metal show. Probably buying like one beer, which I did, just like one beer. And it was St. Patrick's Day. I guess maybe that's why. I don't know. But we went, and uh, the staff was very horrible. They were trying to cattle car us like it was fucking 1940s Poland. It was just very unpleasant experience uh, as far as the staff. Everyone else was Yeah, and we found out from creator, I guess they had some issues with the venue too, so. Yeah, everybody did, even obituary. So, we talked uh, about it. Nothing against the, you know, we've got obituary. fans from North Carolina. It's nothing against you. It's just that venue, if you've been there, then you know what the fuck we're talking about, so. Yeah, it's just stay away from the underground and the Fillmore. But the stuff. interview you're going to hear is actually from our favorite venue. And that is in from in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Masquerade. Yeah, uh, been I've been going to since I was a kid, and you know it's in a different location. But uh, it's at um, Kenny's Alley now. If you guys were confused as to where the old um, which textile sounds like, which mill which building like is a, gone, it's now a Kenny's hipster. Alley. Sounds like a gay bowling alley. <laughs> Come down to Kenny's Alley <laughs> and, and bowl your bowl your meat <laughs> and get you some. Get you some. <laughs> but you you literally can get killed near Kenny's Alley. Yeah, it's but also. I'm looking forward to the weather gang bangers, being Emily. warmer when we travel up there from Florida because we're used to everything being warm when we wander around a venue. We're not used to it being cold, so it's like I don't really feel comfortable. So I gotta wear a fucking ski mask everywhere. Right, people exactly. already yeah. want to stab me to death. Correct. Um, you gotta fit in. But yeah, awesome interview. <coughs> Doctor had a lot of fun. I know you guys will have a lot of fun listening to this. It's very insightful. It's very, it's just very open, very fun interview. So you guys will definitely have a good time listening to the. This side of Millie is pretty cool. Very personal. Um, so, yeah, pick up Gods of Violence. It's in stores now on Nuclear Blast Records. If you haven't heard it yet, it's you can listen to it anywhere. Just fucking check it out. Please do. It's, it's amazing. And catch uh, Creator on tour in the United States. And we hope you guys enjoy. And as always, stay fucking gory. How we doing? This is Dr. Vincent West with the Phantasm Podcast, and I have the honor of sitting here with one of my favorite bands and a living legend to me, and this is Millie from Creator. How are you doing, my friend? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Awesome. This is uh, really exciting for me, so I appreciate you doing this. Um, Do you mind doing a brief history of the band? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, You want me to... to, to If you don't care. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we, we formed the band in 85. Um, been doing records since, and uh, I think the first six records came out on Noise Records, a label okay. in Germany. Um, then, of course, the nineties, we were on a major record label in Europe, not in the U.S. Okay. Um, uh, and in the beginning of the two thousand two thousand one, we got a new signed a new deal with SPV. Um, and now we're with Nuclear Blast, and uh, we've been doing 14 albums. Stuart's of Violence is our 14th album. Um, yeah, it's been alright. Um, been been around a little for a little while. <laughs> the new album is unbelievable. I mean, I can't get enough of it. I don't. I don't know what it. And I'm. I'm serious. Like it's really my co-host and I. We just love it. I mean, all we right. miss it so much. All it's right. so so fun to hear the songs live. Well, after so many years, that's that's a, that's that's really nice. It's it is, and it's you know. I remember the first record that I bought was uh, Extreme Aggressions over you here. See, do you go a long way? I mean, for us as a band, it's uh, it's we have we're very privileged that that our old older fans like yourself um, appreciate the new music as well. Oh, you know, um, I, I know so many bands from back in the day where people go see their shows and they wait for the old stuff. Right. I, I think that that is the case with our band as well, but it's not like people don't want to hear the new stuff. You know? Right. So that's 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 really cool. I mean, um, uh, and we're really happy that it's that 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 we we found like a uh, like a like 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 the music, the, the the way we write the songs, kind of like 
it's it's something that pleases us and makes us happy and makes the fans happy. You know, but we don't feel any limitation or we don't feel like oh we have to play heavy or something. We love it, you know. But and we don't feel limited as as artists um, playing fast fresh metal. You know, we just added on the last record, Gods of Violence. We added some some more melody, maybe some more atmosphere, some more history. You know, like like. Like storytelling lyrics, and uh, maybe uh, for some people, you know, that came from the way old school. So, you know, of course, it's not pleasure kill, but it's definitely like a, the same kind of attitude that we still have when we started, and we still have it nowadays. It's so fresh. I mean, when I heard it, I was like, I couldn't get enough. I listened to it once. I was like, this is different. And my co-host and I, we can't get enough of it. That's, right, I mean, we good. absolutely. That's why this is so important. I wanted. Oh, to, I mean, cool. it's our record of the year so far. Like, we're oh, going great. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank it's you. It's just much. really, really good. But uh, I, I don't know. I think a lot of older bands, you know, they put stuff out, and it feels like it's going through the motions. My God, you guys aren't doing that. I mean, I, it's so refreshed. I mean, it really. Phantom Antichrist was amazing, mm. and then you just outdid yourself on the new album. Like, I mean, Thank it's you. unbelievable the artwork. Uh, I love how it's got different artwork uh, in, uh, in uh, Europe uh, and then uh, here, uh, and that's. Uh, really cool so but yeah it's thank you thank you very much and uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, you You did uh, some European touring before you came over to the States yeah we did a tour with uh, Sepultura and Soywork and uh, Aborted a band from Belgium oh yeah um, I was great uh, we did like I think five weeks or something okay and uh, you know right like a couple of days after the record came out and uh, um in the beginning, it was a little. We were still a little shaky because, you know, when we, we went with the new songs and we we, we put like five songs in there, and uh, five new songs and uh, set list kind of came together after we went. You know, it took a while this time, like maybe four shows, five shows, and then, we, okay. then but then we were tight. And we rehearsed like for two weeks be- before the, the tour started, and we did a pre-production day in France. But still, when we played the first show, everything was different. You know, it's uh, it's always like that. It's always like that when you go on stage with new material every time. It's like you don't know how to how to perform the songs yet. It's different when you go into a rehearsal and you you play the songs. Right. Performing the songs is a different story. It's um, I mean, I just I don't know the the first track that I heard I believe was Satan is real. Yeah. Video is awesome. Yeah. The the song is great, yeah. and it's. It reminded me of like uh, I'm not sure you know I'll, mm-hmm. I'll let you tell everybody mm-hmm. what it's about but for me it was like I don't know it was a really creepy video like I really liked it that really caught me and then the visuals with the because I remember when I was a kid you know mm-hmm. I saw the video for Betrayer and I yeah. was like on Heavy Ringer's Ball and I was like this is fucking awesome about mm-hmm. this you know and it was the same way it was really yeah, cool. was all like, right, all right. we got inspiration from the movie The Witch okay uh, it's a it's a movie that came out last year um, and. Um, I, the, the the three videos that we put out for for uh, except these first three videos that we put out we we did the fourth one which is Fallen Brother which is a to- totally different concept <coughs> like the video for Gods of Violence um, Satan is real and and Total Terror and Terror were all like related and it's, it tells a story about like the the, the evil like incarnate um, as our demon the, that's on our right. covers yeah um, going through different um, uh, eras of history, um, so it's uh, you know he starts out in the in the in the in the in the like medieval Greece. Right. He comes to life in an orgy. Then he goes through like medieval times during the witch hunts, and it ends up in the modern age where the Nazis and you know politics and stuff like that. Right. <laughs> it's. It's a great track. It was, I mean, especially as a single, you know, and it's it was a really yeah, it's, it's catchy, isn't it? Oh, it's yeah. I mean the the oh yeah, I can't get enough of the right. when you the the last where you're you're screaming it. The, right. the uh, it's it's fucking awesome. Thank you, man. So Thank it's you. it's really cool. But uh, and then um, you want to talk a little bit about um, maybe Fallen Brother? I thought that was a really cool song. Fallen Brother is a song that we were um, writing for. I mean, I got inspiration from uh, Death in the Family, of course, um, and uh, oh, and of course, a lot last year, a lot of people just dropped, you know, like Lemmy, oh yeah, and uh, lo- like a lot of the people that I've grown up with, 
And like I said, I mean, when you get to, to a certain age, like we, we are now, right. I'm in the f- uh, 40s or something, you're like, fuck, man, uh, we're getting up there, <laughs> you know. Definitely. And it's, a, it's, it's, just a, it's just something that just happens. I mean, I, I think, um, I, I don't, I, I'm not like, I don't think it's, uh, to me, this is not, this is not like a, a, a thing that's not natural. I think it's right. just life, um, definite life. It's, it's, it's one thing, you know, it, it, it will be, at the minute you become, a, a, you know, you, you're born, you, you, you start right. dying. <laughs> you know, it's it's a very powerful. Story. Yeah, yeah, the video is uh, very powerful. Yeah, story. yeah. So it's, it's a tribute. It's, it's, it's not like um, how to put this. It's very easy. The sim- the story is very simple, um, but it, it has an effect on people. You know, we it didn't we can we, we can we can see on, on the, when we when we when we when the reactions of the video was like, this is awesome. You know, this is like a nice tribute without being too cheesy about things because I don't want, I, you know. I know these people that the people that we mentioned on, on in the video, the people that I was looking at, some of them I even knew personally. Okay. And um, so uh, I, I I don't want you know it's like a tribute is always a tribute, but it's it's a thin line between being uh, between, um, you know coming up with a tribute and becoming cheesy. You know what I mean? So. I, I like, it's I, like not I, I like the fact that the video came out the way it came out. It's yeah. very emotional. It's yeah, a good yeah. song, yeah, and yeah, I, it yeah, was yeah. a really cool part of the set list too. It was a nice yeah, surprise yeah. too. So, and then um, I really like um, just for a second. We'll just pause and kind of talk about this a second. I really love the title track. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. Yeah, it's great. It's, I, I like it's, it too. It's a uh, it's the oldest track of the record. I, I wrote this song like in two thousand. 13 already okay. um, but I, I, I rewrote it like 15 times or something I mean the the, 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 the the original version was totally different from what you hear now okay. but that's how it goes you know when I start writing songs um, I, I just collect ideas sometimes the careers the ideas uh, develop into something exciting okay. sometimes the ideas the song um, gets torn apart and thrown away and I only take like certain bits for other songs so for me, the quality is important, and it's not only the quality. It's not like we're not robots. We want to transport emotion, and we want to be able to make people feel something. And in order to to achieve that, it's like you have to be very honest. You have to, you know, come up with something that, like you said, move, you know, like moves people emotionally on an emotional level, um, and. Um, be heavy, you know. It's a, that's, right. this is, to me, being in a metal band or being in a fresh metal band. It's not like a. It's not like I don't see it any different than than other forms of music. You know, I right. love I love all kinds of music. You know, right. um, to me, it's uh, if music if music is either either exciting or not. So I'm not um, an elitist where I go like I only listen to metal. Right. And um, but I think it's 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 an art form, and that's how it should be treated. Oh, you know? definitely, definitely, and uh, and uh, so to me, there's no difference between a great song by a pop artist or a great metal song. You know, it's there's a sitar. Oh yeah, there's all, all kinds of stuff on the record. I mean, it's, a, it was really there's, ex- ex- it, it was neat. there's bagpipe on the, yeah. on, on one of the songs. Um, Hail to the Horde. There's uh, there's there's all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of. Um, all kinds of instruments and uh, we were just going for it you know um, because I think it was about time to add some some other stuff uh, and people appreciate it they, they love the stuff you know they it, it, it adds something to the atmosphere of their own it, I don't know what it is and I, don't, I can't really put my finger on it but when I heard it I was like this is really cool and okay. I couldn't figure out and then it's one of those records where the more I listen to it the more mm-hmm. it grew but there's so many hidden details in there uh, we we took we made sure that like after we recorded the basic tracks the drum and the bass to you know really take our time for the guitars for for ideas like right. regarding like outside instruments and stuff like that so without going too crazy you know without not being creator you know the production on it's really good it's nice uh, Jens Bogren the the guy that we work with he's amazing he's uh, one of the best producers at this point. In time, metal producers, in my opinion. Have you used him before? Yeah, twice. Uh, on Phantom Metal. Phantom Metal. Okay, yeah. I thought that was familiar. 
Um, and do you... What, what about the artwork? The artwork is uh, something that came about, and it was a hard ride, because the first idea that we had was not good. And uh, I had my, my cover art uh, work guy to really work on it, and you know, in the last minute, I was like, I don't like it. Please okay. come up with something else. And he came up with something else. Talking about the European artwork. Okay. The, the, the American artwork came, like, was a very spontaneous idea. Because when I saw it, <coughs> I told my guy here in the U.S., Gerardo. I, I, I was like, Gerardo, we have to, like, release this as a single. Do something because this artwork is just... Mind, just as mind blowing as the European one, right. but in a diff, totally different style. It just adds up. It's more like focused on one thing. Where the the European artwork is more detailed. It's a lot of things going on on the artwork. But this is more like bam, you know, in your face. And I, and I told Gerard we have to do something. And it's like, why don't we do like two different cover arts? And I'm like, mm, yeah, why not? <laughs> and. Um, yeah, that's how that came about. And Marcelo Vasco, he's he's working on a lot of our stuff now. A days, he's doing a lot of T-shirt artworks, a lot of posters for us, all kinds of stuff. And it's, it was good to meet to, to to have known him because um, I wasn't aware that he's doing. He's, he's so quick, you know. He's very right. he's very quick and very creative guy. Well, he does such uh, the artwork. I thought it was really neat because when I saw the U.S. release, I didn't know that there was you know different artwork in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I bought the digipack because I wanted mm -hmm. the DVD and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I bought it, and I got home. And I was like, "Oh, cool! It's got the, the it's got, inside. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. And uh, I love that you put the, the second disc instead of like a making of thing. I thought it was even though I would love to see the making yeah, yeah, of record, yeah, yeah. but I thought it was cool you put the the live show. I thought that yeah, was really yeah. Cool. I think that's 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 a lot more. I mean, the making of to me. It's been done. We've done it on on, on Phantom Many Christ, right? And it's been done by so many other bands. I think um, sometimes it's cool, but it's like when I, you know, when I watched like, for example, I'm a big movie nerd, and I we never, I never, I never watch making off of movies because yeah. it ruins everything. I mean, maybe afterwards, but if you watch a making off before you you watch the movie, it destroys the whole thing, and um, so. Sometimes it's interesting, but most of the time it takes away the magic, you know? Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know. I just thought it was a cool... Because I wasn't expecting to get that because I didn't know when I got it home. I was like, oh, this is cool. And I yeah. had a couple beers and watched yeah. the... Yeah. <laughs> Valken, if I'm saying right. Yeah, 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 so yeah, that, was, yeah, yeah. that was really cool. Um, and some of the other tracks. Do you, do you have a favorite track on the record? Or do you I uh, really... I, I, for some reason, I like some of the tracks we don't play live. For example, Death Becomes My Light is one of my favorites. Okay. That's the last track of the record. We do we play it as an outro on, at the shows. Um, I would love to do that song, but you know, and at this point, um, at this point, we're focusing more on a set list that is kind of like a history lesson for those who are not as old school as me and you. You know, right. for the younger kids, if they come to the show. We want to present some of the old stuff to them as well. So there is only an hour and a half that we have, and we don't want to overdo it. But maybe on the second run, uh, we we add this song to the set list because I think it's, it has a nice like maiden vibe almost. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, I, you know, it's weird. Like for me, and I'm, I was curious if you felt this way. I really, I just, I don't know. It all works so great together. Yeah, I don't know. It's been. I don't know. Like I said, it just blew me away when I bought it. I was like, "Wow, this there's no creator," and I was like, "This is fucking awesome." And then I bought it, and you listen to it, and then I listened to it again. It's like I couldn't stop listening to it. All right. <laughs> you know, and Satan's Real was the first one I got hooked on, right, and, right. and then the title track, and then and right. therefore, so it's it's really really cool. I like right. it. Um, do you want to talk about? Let's, I guess we should talk about the Decibel Tour that you're on right now. Decibel Tour to me um, is a great opportunity to you know finally with obituary <laughs> you know yeah. because we've been talking with have been friends for so long you know oh, that's we've awesome friends. we've been friends for forever and uh, we I didn't know that it would ever happen like in this lifetime right that we do a tour with the obituary but now being on tour with them it's perfect it's a perfect mix because they do their thing and we do our thing <laughs> and it's totally brutal and it's totally um, unique but in a whole different style. Yeah, definitely. Greater. So it kind of really fits, you know. They're more like, almost like doomy and more more like groovy. They have this they have this groove that I really love. 
Oh, and, yeah, um, I'm looking at that. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm so happy. And, of course, there's two uh, opening bands. I haven't had the chance to check them out yet, but... I, I, you know, people seem to really like them. So well, that's good. It's 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 a nice it's a nice mix. It's a nice tour. Good diversity um, there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a nice. This is only the second show. Turnouts are great. Um, there's going to be a lot of sold out shows um, already. That's you know, um, we can see that from the pre sales. And um, so yeah, it's, it's it's good to be back in the U.S., man. Well, we're ha- definitely happy to have you here. All right. Um, and you want to talk a little bit about what you're going to be doing, uh, if, you, if you can, uh, after you finish the Destiny uh, It's tour. More, more touring. Um, there's a festival season coming up in Europe. Oh, fantastic. And um, we're planning on doing a second run in Europe and a second run in the U.S. My manager is coming tomorrow, and uh, we will discuss what we're going to do next for, for more touring in the U.S. Because, you know, on this run, we only hit, like, the A mar- a so-called A markets. And uh, next tour we want to do maybe you know goes to some places that we haven't been on this tour. Uh, looking forward to that too. All right. Yeah. Um, so and we do. Uh, you're talking about you like movies. Um, mm-hmm. We also specialize on the podcast besides metal. We do uh, horror movies. All oh, right. And I was curious maybe if you'd like to maybe talk about the first horror movie you saw that you really. The first horror movie I saw was probably. Uh, Godzilla versus King Kong or something or Godzilla or something some okay. Japanese movie I was a real like I was I was my, my grandfather took me to the movie theater in Germany and um, it was kids afternoon Sunday Sunday afternoon kids awesome. like a matinee yeah a matinee and um, only for like the, and for some reason they showed like the Japanese Godzilla movies that was that must have been the first one I saw in a movie theater the first movie that I the horror movie that I saw on TV must have been like Frankenstein. Oh, nice! And I'm, and I'm still like a, a total nerd when it comes to Universal mm-hmm. horror and old school Hammer Hammer uh, horror, um, but also the new stuff. You know, I, I I'm I'm like I uh, I get like two different horror movie magazines uh, in awesome. Germany. And I'm like, I went to uh, Sieges, Sieges, the um, fantastic film festival in, in, in Spain. Okay. And, I, and I, last year I went there and I saw like such great stuff. I also like science fiction, you know. I was there uh, last time. Uh, Rob Zombie was presenting his new movie, 31. <coughs> I haven't checked that out yet. It's pretty crazy. It's, it's good, yeah, I heard. And um, when I was there... Um, in in in, in Sieges, which is uh, close to Barcelona, okay. I checked out um, the new documentary that um, uh, Leonard Nimoy's son came out with. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Uh, Love, That's where Love, I watched Love it. Love of Park. It's really yeah, cool. It's it is really cool. Because um, it just shows a different side of the guy. You 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 know when you when you think of Spock, you only, only think about this this you know like. Uh, Vulcan with no emotions, but he was he was actually a cool guy. Right. Now, Star Trek, are you are you an original series guy, next generation? Uh, original and next generation. I like Voyager, but then I'm... That, that's it. Voyager, for me, when 7 and 9 came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. <laughs> she's hot, she's a Borg, yeah, yeah, and she's... Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. it doesn't get much better than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought you'd get a kick out of this. I thought I'd show you that. There's me with William Shatner. Oh, my God! Yeah. Uh-huh. Where was that? Convention? In Tennessee, yeah. Right. It was seventy dollars. I was like, I've got to do it. Oh, of course, I've got to do it. So I got to meet William Shatner. But, um, were you a Stargate fan at all? Uh, Stargate. See, the Stargate was to me was based on on. I was a Palo City. Okay. Uh, Palo City. Uh, when I was really young, I was seventeen. I joined this. It's not a cult, but it's a. Science organization okay. done by a guy that uh, Eric von Däniken in Germany is a Swiss, it's a Swiss, uh, Swiss author, and he has a. It's an organization of people who believe that the there was a, an ancient astronauts, vis- aliens visited the Earth like way back and uh, built the pyramids and all that stuff. Oh, cool! So um, Stargate was based on that. So I was. It, the same with the same with um, uh, Mulder and uh, oh X Files X Files uh, same thing every X Files episode that I watched I was like I know this from the books 
that I read when I was a kid because those are based on like actual real events wow I bet you don't know if they were real you know like there was no real evidence but a lot of nerds would go like oh this is evidence for, <laughs> right. for alien uh, an alien invasion in the, in the ancient times and I'm not sure if it's whether or not we've been visited by aliens it back like uh, whatever you went you know built the pyramids or what, whatever right. Mesopotamia or whatever but uh, I thought the concept was cool that's why I was never into Stargate and I was kind of into X-Files but not really you know gotcha. because I got like so many of the Tunguska uh, catastrophe when the meteor hit Russia yeah that was one episode in, in um, X-Files and I was like yeah the, you took that I think it was really in the movie and I was like you took that from the book and I was I thought it was like a to me, it was kind of almost like a ripoff. You knew where they were getting their yeah, their, yeah. their product yeah, yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, that's interesting. Um, any other sci-fi that you like? Um, I was just I just checked out the um, you know what was really cool. You should uh, check out Kong uh, Skull Island. Have you seen it? Not yet. I want to see it. Watch it in the movie theater. It's probably useless when you watch it on a, on your on a small screen and yeah. computer. But if you watch it in the movie theater, it's great. It's amazing. The story is shit, but it's amazing. It's a, it's a nice, like, nice CGI. It's not CGI that doesn't look like CGI, you know what I mean? Perfect movie. I love that. Movie. I'm going to definitely have to go see that. Uh, you you got to watch it. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's a blockbuster. It's no, not, no deep shit, but it's really cool. I'll tell you one. If you've not seen it, I'll recommend to you. Have you seen Logan yet? Logan? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, God, that's also what a great. Fucking what awesome a fucking movie, great movie. Man. I was like, I was like, what the fuck? Why is he so old? But then I realized, okay, it's, it's taking place in 2035 or something. Yeah, yeah. And I, at first I thought, man, that guy aged. And I, and I got this, and it was really cool. Too bad he died in the end. Oh, no, I was you're fine. No, you're fine. <laughs> but I mean, it's dark. I, mean, I love it. It's really dark. It's really my, dark. Uh, my girlfriend was like, I didn't like that they killed it's like, well that's that's part of the emotion of the story. Yeah, like yeah. I love the way that they yeah, 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 yeah. The X twenty three's his kid. Yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. Everything badass, the yeah. whole this whole this whole thing, this whole movie was really it was brutal, but in a nice in the you know, sometimes I don't like what I don't like sometimes it's like there's so many movies. For example, um, the new Star Wars. I went there and I, I, I was all, I fell asleep though. Rogue One? Yeah, Rogue One. I, I didn't like it. Too much like no story and only like shooting and right. What I the only thing I liked was that um, Vincent Price came back to life. That was that. Did you see the this wrong one? Oh yeah, yeah. Vincent Price came back to life. I, I was, uh, at one point, I was like, "This is cool," but that's the only cool thing about the movie. Um, but anyway, um, I'm more into like obscure stuff, you know. Um, but also blockbusters. I like everything. What's some of the obscure stuff that you like? Um, like I said, the movie The Witch. Have you have to? Check I'm gonna it out? have to watch that now. Oh, I'm gonna have to. You, you're gonna love it. If you're a horror nerd, oh, you're I am. It. You're gonna love it. But you have to really pay attention to it. It's not your typical horror. It's more like subconscious and uh, bizarre and eerie. Cool. Um, um, other than that, did you like the Conjuring movies? Did you see those? Yeah, they're okay. I mean, they're kind. Then the, the last one. The last one was the one where the guy looked like Eric Marilyn Manson, right? Yeah. What that's the fuck? Exactly. I was like, I was like, why is Marilyn Manson playing in the movie that nobody's talking about? Exactly. It? And it wasn't. But no. <laughs> yeah, it, looks like, it does. It looks like him. It's exactly, but that was a pretty trippy. Yeah, movie. It's, it's okay. I, I, to, to me, those kind of movies are like. To me, it's like. You know, they have a formula, and it's like eating fast food. I all, I, I watch them all. But they're not highlights. They're okay, right. you know. I, but for you know to whatever, I watch. I, I, if I go to the movie theater, I prefer to go to a horror movie. You know. Have you seen Incarnate with Eric Eckhart? Have you seen that no. yet? Is that good? You know, for what it was, I actually thought it was really What's interesting. Called? Incarnate. Never heard of it. He's a demonologist, but he's not a priest. Oh, he doesn't believe in religion oh, no, stuff, wait, wait. but he's. Did I, did I watch it? No, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the dead giveaway when you watch it. His assistant, the whole movie, I just thought this was really cool. The whole movie is wearing like old decapitated shirts. All right. <laughs> I just thought that was cool. It's like he's, 
he's wearing like old like nail t-shirts and, and some of their other older records and I was just like well that's cool like organic hallucinosis and stuff I was like that's really cool fucking cool yeah, but it's a, it's a weird movie because I, I, I thought it was cool because he's not religious yeah you know usually it's like a, a priest religious person yeah, yeah. trying to get the demon out of the yeah. possessed person well he's not at all okay he's kind of like an you know what I also weird. like I like the I like American Horror Story uh, I haven't got to watch that yet I've not, got, not at all no my wife loves it and I haven't she's oh you should man she loved, and she's uh, my girlfriend. Excuse me, but we're engaged. Sorry, but that, but yeah, she had the uh, you should all that it. stuff recorded on her DVR. I'm going to. I just it's, 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 it's perfect. It's it's like the, there's a couple of uh, um, um, ones that are better than others. The last one with Lady Gaga wasn't the best, but it was also okay. How weird she was in that strange. Yeah, yeah. But um, but the the, the first and the second and the third and and Coven to me is the, my favorite. It's it's pretty cool. I haven't watched that either. Have you heard about this band Seal and Ardor? No. Oh, uh, you should check them out. They're like, um, they're like a, a black black metal band. Okay. It's like it's like <laughs> it's it's so trippy. Uh, it's, they're one of my favorite band at the moment. So maybe a recommendation for for yeah, for, for, yeah, please, for you. Um, they play like this guy. He it's it's very bluesy, but it's like he imagined that. Um, the, the, the slaves in, in you know in the times of slavery uh, the African slaves became Satanist oh, and wow. <laughs> and then he's like he, he um he, he this is all about this really dark like gospel black metal it's interesting something you never heard before you ab- I mean if you check it out you probably haven't heard anything like it yeah, I definitely never, never heard of them. Yeah, so yeah, nice. you, you check them out. Seal and R. Seal and R. Am I saying with, with a C? With a C. Okay. Set, set. Set and R. Seal, seal and R. Oh, okay. That's and, an interesting uh, name. The 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 the, 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 um, the 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 title track of the album is called "Devil Is Fine." Really? Yeah. Do they have just one album out, or do they just one album? Cool. You, you might like it. You might get into it. It's really. I like some old black metal stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, it's, it's not. It's not really black metal. It's like it's bluesy, it's experimental. It's, it's not really experimental. It's really song oriented, but it's like it's very bluesy. It's very dark. It's very eerie. It's like a horror movie almost soundtrack. It's cool. really cool. You, it sounds. You, really you cool. might like it. Yeah, I'll definitely check that out. So, you guys, check that out. A little recommendation there right. some new music um, yeah. did you when you were when you were a kid was there a horror movie though that scared like for me it was The Exorcist the first time I saw scared the shit out of me I don't know why because my, I think because my, my I was never was scared of horror movies for some reason oh that's um, I was more I, I, it was like it gave me like a, 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 almost like a, a nice feel you know like a pleasant chill more, more like uh, rather than like being scared you enjoyed um, it. Yeah, I enjoyed that kind of stuff. The only one I I really came with, like for some reason when I watched The Ring, that was kind of scary, but that I was already like in my 30s or something. But that that was the only movie that was like, oh, this is scary. But I never get really scared, like scared like a, as a kid you don't get I didn't get scared. I I love um I didn't want to watch any movies that I didn't have monsters. That's understood. So, yeah, I'm a big, I love Godzilla. To me, those were not movies. When I was a kid, I didn't think that any movie was worth being a movie if there's no monsters, aliens, <laughs> whatever in it. So I needed, like, other movies didn't make sense to me as a kid. Right. You know? So that was like, yeah. And then that's why I, you know, did my. Did, most of the time, every th- most movies that I watched are horror movies and spooky movies, um, science fiction, you know that kind of stuff. What do you think of that Alien Covenant that's about to come? Ah, out? I hope it's going to be good. It looks good. Prometheus was yeah, weird. Did you yeah. like it? I love it. I love it. It I, was a strange movie. Yeah, but it's good. It it's is great. cool. There's a great cast. That's also too. that's also based on um, terraforming. It was called uh, the a- ancient astronaut society, <laughs> like the the Paleo Zeti. Okay, they were coming up with this concept where aliens would go to planets that potentially would have the 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 the, 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 the climate where you can like plant life wow and the first scene when he was jumping in the water that's kind of like what the paleozeti was saying that it was called terraforming and um, that's based like so prometheus is 
based on that also, which makes sense, you know. Like nowadays, all of a sudden, all these science fiction movies, like it all kind, of, it's all connecting for some reason, you know. Yeah, yes. Are you a Blade Runner fan at all? Oh yeah. That, that, I hope the new the re remake. You know, I sometimes, I sometimes I think like, why do they do these re remakes? Same here. But but you gotta think of the younger generation. You know, I don't think the way the movie theaters nowadays, they don't play classic movies. No. And some of the younger uh, people, they might not do the homework. You know, they might just never heard, have never heard of Blade Runner. They might have never heard of... They even want to do like a Matrix remake now. Makes me feel old because it, to me that's a new movie. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. I feel the exact same way. I feel the exact same way, and they they do that. And you know, it's funny. Uh, last year, uh, my co-host's uh, girlfriend's friend, she had never seen The Shining, and Turner Classic Movies had it in a theater uh, about thirty minutes from where we live, so we went and watched yeah. it. And we got to the theater, and she loved it. And I was like, "You've never seen that?" And you know, it's so different watching that on the big I, you screen. You know what? It's because we we, we come from this, we, we're, we're older, so we have seen these movies. Yep, but. Like so many young people haven't, so for them the remakes are for them. Definitely. But I, I, I still went to see the Evil Dead remake, and I thought it was kind of cool. Have you watched Ash vs. Evil Dead? Uh, that's good. That's good. Oh, it's good. <laughs> he's great. He's yeah, yeah, he's, Bruce he's Campbell's really yeah, fun. Yeah. Bubba Hotep was a movie I liked. Did you yeah, like that? Yeah, one? yeah, it was good. It was good. I liked it. A little bit of a hype. Um, Eyes of My Mother is another one I want to see. Have you heard of it? I have it. I haven't seen it. Uh, I haven't seen it. That was played. That played at, at Seizures Festival, and I didn't. I did. I, I missed it. But um, yeah, that's another one on my list. I'll tell you a strange movie. If you, I mean, it's really out there. I'll warn you. Is a movie called The Greasy Strangler. Never heard of it. I had never heard of it, and Phil and Selmo had told <laughs> us about okay. it because he loved it, yeah. and Corey and I watched it, and it's the. I've, Melted my brain. It's the mm. weirdest movie I think I've ever really? seen. I mean, it's a horror movie, it but called? it's just the Greasy Strangler. Oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. I will remember that the Greasy Strangler. It is. That isn't. That movie's out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I miss those times, man. I went. I. How do you like the the? Do you like um the Neon Demon and Drive? Those kind of yeah. movies. Um, I, I miss the times when uh, David Lynch was able to write oh. like great movies and. I think he's too much into his uh, um, the, like the, the meditation that he does, uh, the transcendent uh, the meditation, whatever. Um, to write a movie, but he's doing a new Twin Peaks. I want to. I'm excited about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. Did you? I don't know if you noticed this. I'm, I freaked me out. There's a lot of cast he didn't bring back. He did not, right? Yeah, yeah. it's weird. Like there were characters that I thought for sure, like I thought for sure he'd bring Laura Flynn Boyle back. Yeah, I guess yeah, he's yeah, not bringing yeah. her back. And yeah, I don't know if Sherilyn Finn's coming back for like. I wouldn't think so. Mickey not make it in it, right? Yes, yeah, I think. Yeah, God, yeah, she yeah. was so hot. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, she was yeah, really yeah, hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, my favorite David Lynch movie is Blue Velvet. Blue Velvet and Irish Eyes. That's a <laughs> the Elephant Man. And what at heart? The the four. It's so weird to say that, but with David Lynch is almost like. It's almost like with some of these bands, you know, like we talked about all the metal bands. Like you always, some a lot of people tend to say, like your first five albums were the best. Same with David Lynch. <laughs> I, I I thought I, no, but then again, I I li kind of liked um, Mulholland Drive. I was about to say that's a yeah. great, that's a that, plus that girl and it's hot. I thought yeah 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 absolutely. That's a, that's the one hard. after that, um, <laughs> um, <coughs> the the Excuse Empire. Me. What was it called? That that I didn't like. The Lost Tom Inland, Inland Empire I've never seen that Yes yeah, You don't have to Is that the last thing he did? That's the last I have not movie. seen it Lost Highway I thought was interesting Yeah but I didn't get it It was almost no, like a, It was almost like a jazz uh, Song That I didn't oh, get Oh it was crazy It was very it's confusing like, And it's all I, don't, I, I still didn't get it I, I watched it at least Four times And I don't get that movie so Oh no It's, I, it's I, I just don't get it I got I kind of got Mulholland Drive But I'm not sure I mean it's you have to inter you have to come up with your own version, I guess. Oh, definitely, because yeah. it's it's so out there. All that stuff that he does is, yeah. you know. So hopefully the Twin Peaks thing will be cool. Yeah, I, I will see. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Um, well, I can't thank you enough for doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, Gods of Violence is available now. Yeah, and you guys get that, and be sure to go see 
creator on the decibel tours there in invading America. And I will I will um check out the creepy strangler. Greasy strength. Greasy strength. I'm going to have to write that down for you. All right. <laughs> it's, a weird, it's a weird movie. All right. You'll like that. Hi, this is Miller from Creator, and you're listening to the Phantasm Podcast. Awesome. I can't thank you. This is amazing. Thank you right. so much for doing this. It was this. interesting. <laughs> Big suit from Phantasm. Good evening, Walnut Lake Shopper. It's closing time. The star will be closing in 15 minutes. But the night crew still has work to do. (laughs) Because there's one last customer who isn't satisfied. No, this creep keeps calling you. He's driving us nuts. Leave me alone. He wants to slash their prices. Who's there? He wants to cut their inventory. You're crazy! He wants to chop until they all drop. I saw him kill Linda. And now, he's turning their retail store... There's gonna be one more killing here tonight. ...into a wholesale slaughterhouse. (laughs) From the producers of Evil Dead 2 and Pulp Fiction comes a new chapter in terror... Bruce Campbell, Ted Raimi, Renee Estevez, and Sam Raimi in Intruder, A New Dimension in Terror. I'm just crazy about this story. Every legend is based on fact. Every myth is grounded in truth. For 17 years, the town of Haddonfield, Illinois, has been haunted by a night when evil roamed the streets and a madman ruled the night. Everyone knows his name. Now, everyone will know the truth. I knew what he was, but I never knew why. of Michael Myers. See Jimmy Lane as Reno Miller, a man driven to the very edge. Stuart Gordon, the director of Fortress, The Pit and the Pendulum, and Reanimator, takes you into the dungeons of Castle Dorsino. Now an American family. Welcome to Castle Riley, lady. Will inherit a legacy of evil. They say the castle is haunted. And a master of modern horror. Will unleash his most terrifying creation. Stuart Gordon's Castle Free. There's somebody else here! There's there's somebody in the castle! We want 
you to search the castle. Giorgio Dorsino. He was never buried. She kept him alive. He's here somewhere in the castle. There is a madman in there, but my family is in danger. Reanimators Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton. In Stuart Gordon's Castle Free. Watch that crate, that's very expensive. For centuries, he has remained hidden, watching, waiting. And now, he is coming. He knows your secret hopes. He sees your private dreams. And he can grant your every desire. Well, I'm not a <laughs> greedy man. How about a million dollars? I remember a certain potentate whose last party was talked about for centuries. Oh, God, how I'd love to host a party like that. I wish to be beautiful forever. Even if it kills you. As you wish. <laughs> Was it worth it? Would you like to escape? Yeah. No! Beg for your life. Help me! Pray for your soul. But whatever you do... Ready to play? Don't make a wish. <laughs> wish Master. Careful what you wish for.